Welcome ladies and gentlemen of the Trade Recreation Ground for the third and final day of the Cricket Northwest season in this Bendigo Bank first grade men's grand final. We are set for a thrilling final day of competition here as Wynyard resumed the day at 9 for 228. Try and chase down Olsen's first inning score of 249. It's been a magnificent effort by Greg Sharman and the Wynyard Tailenders to get close to this target after being 8 for 121 Yesterday, they uh, put on 30 runs for the ninth week between Sharman and Valabonini. And then Sharman and Riley Stafford, the young leg spinner, number 11, have put on 77 runs for the 10th wicket and hauled Wynyard back into this game and the chance of getting the first innings lead. And from there, who knows what's going to happen. So players just making their way out of the field at the moment. Two umpires, Mark Smith and Scott Pearce are already out there. The Olsen guys have just emerged from the change rooms and are about to take the field. Cool conditions here at La Trobe this morning. Certainly a bit of extra cloud cover than there has been in the last few days. Uh, but on top of that, it's probably a little bit more dew on the ground this morning. So I'll also be keen to keep that ball off the playing surface and hopefully exploit where freshness, freshness is in this pitch this morning and the, and the overhead conditions. Trying to find a co-commentator this morning was tough, I think, uh, but Olsen and Winnie people who have uh, started to roll up in good numbers here, all very nervous. Plenty of, uh, no one's not quite sure what's going to happen, especially after yesterday's heroics by Sharman and Stafford to uh, get their team into contention this match when when they all looked lost at 8 for 121. Sharman, first century in a first grade grand final since 2004-2005. A magnificent century was. Survived a drop chance on when he was on two. And uh, rubbed his luck a little bit after that, but uh, probably the last the last 50 or so of his years, after he got his half century, really knuckled down and uh, it was very hard to get out. Young Stafford certainly played and missed it a few, especially off uh, the bowling of Matthew Varner. But uh, Varner couldn't find the outside edge, and when he did, it uh, usually fell safely between Slip and Gully and tripled down a third man for runs. So he's held his end up beautifully so far, Stafford, and uh, he'll be expected to. Sharman certainly wasn't afraid to give him the strike during uh, during the last hour of play there yesterday evening. And uh, but I pretty expect Sharman to try and do the bulk of the work here this morning. So. Sharman's going to take strike. It'll be Varna to bowl. 1 for 38 off 19 overs so far for the Olsen import. It's clearly not at full full pace due to a hamstring injury. But uh, they're still bowled pretty reasonable off a shortened run-up. You expect him to leave everything out there today though on the final day of the season. Interesting to see they open up with the other end, Olsen. Ben May has been struggling. We learnt yesterday from coach James Smith that uh, he's been struggling a bit with a rib injury that's just affected him, and he certainly couldn't settle into a consistent line and length there yesterday across his couple of spells. So maybe they go with a Ben Bot or, uh, or maybe a Reese French as the pace option, or do they look to, look to bring on a spinner in Snare or the captain himself, Alex Winwood? All to be revealed, certainly expect to be a very tense first uh, few overs here at La Trobe. Varner is going through his warm-ups. Just the one slip. So it looks like I was happy to try and give Sharman the single. Just the one slip in. Plenty of blokes out in the deep as Varner comes in the bowl. First ball. Oh! Just short length. Sharman looked to cut and it narrowly missed the edge. So we've got one slip, we've got a deep third man, we've got a deep point, a backward point, cover, mid off, mid on, deep backward square and a fine leg. Sharma works that one off the hip, gets himself an easy run there. And the applause from the Wynyard faithful, both in the grandstand where the players are and around the ground, certainly just a little bit more, a little bit noisier than what it was yesterday. Already a good crowd rolling in here to the Trade Recreation Ground. 
plenty going on the North West Coast sport-wise yesterday, so probably not quite the crowd they've had in previous years, but this year, today is uh, expected to be a, a lot more people rolling up. So, Stafford now to face the music. Varner going to come around the wicket here by looks things. Interesting move. First up by the Black Caps. And the fielders are in close. We've got a short leg. We've got a silly point under the helmet. One of them looks like Braden DeVries. And the other looks like uh, the captain, Alex Winwood. So, maybe a look. Uh, shorter pitch bowling here by Varner to try and ruffle Stafford up. In comes Varner, around the wicket. Oh, and there it was. Intentions were clear there. Short pitch one, left well alone there by Stafford. I think he knew what was coming. And he let it pass harm to the outside the off stump. So Stafford faced 109 balls yesterday for his 11 not out. Exceptional innings from the youngster. Barner again, short. Getting the way to the offside by Stafford. And the applause. Certainly the loudest of the uh, grand final so far. We've also got the Cricket North West second grade grand final in progress. At West Park where Olsen is chasing down Bernie's score of 230 from yesterday. Eyeing off a double premiership, but we've been made to work hard here at La Trobe, and certainly it's no fate to complete West Park either against a pretty good Hurricane second grade bowling attack. Barner again continues around the wicket. Short. But uh, no danger there to Stafford. He sways out of the way. Successful over negotiated by Sharman and Stafford. They've added one to the score. Win you 9 for 229 of 111 overs. So coming on at the Gilbert Street end. Looks like they've gone for Ben Bott. Here we go, Here it is. This ball. 31 overs old, the ball. They took the new ball after 80 yesterday afternoon, but uh, couldn't make any breakthroughs. So Bott. Got figures of two for 25 of 12 overs. And again, with uh, probably a deep cover for Sharman here and a deep mid wicket. Now the only two out in the deep by the looks of it. One slip, backward point, point. Extra cover, mid off, mid on, and the guy just behind the square, the gun pie there on the leg side. Shaman goes on the pull. Oh, they go for the run. It's got through Binwood there at mid on. They come back for three. Come Shaman. He's going to do it easy. Good run there by Greg Shaman. Mason uh, Riley Stafford gets through at the other end as well. So valuable three runs there for the Tigers. Takes them up to nine for 232. And within 18 runs of a first innings lead here at Latrobe. So Sharman looked to be aggressive early. And the misfield there by Winwood. Saw them get another couple of runs on top of what they were looking at getting. So, bot to Stafford now. Good line leg. Where's the appeal? No, the finger goes up from Mark Smith. Stafford out. 
Right ball in there from Ben Bott. Caught the edge, well taken by Kelly up to the stumps. And that's the end of the wing. You did his heartbreak for the Tigers. All out for nine, all out for uh, 232. Stafford's innings comes to an end on 11. Great knock, but just found a little outside edge there. And Kelly, lovely catch up to the stumps. Mark Smith raised the finger. And the Tigers have fallen eight, uh, 17 runs short of Olsen's total. Certainly by no means is this game over. You expect uh, Wynyard to uh, send Olsen back in and try and uh, try and rock and roll them early. You know, Sharman let Stafford go off the field. He's going to pat on the back. Well, great innings by Stafford. He'll be disappointed, but you couldn't ask much more for your num from your number 11 batsman in a grand final. So, the Olsen players... No, there's still a bit of work to do in this game. By no means over. When are you going to make them work for it? Looks like uh, they've asked for the roll to come back out and give the pitch another seven minutes of rolling after they've got the seven minutes this, mor this morning as per the rules. So, Olsen got the breakthrough that they couldn't get yesterday. Stafford, Stafford's innings, he played and missed it many yesterday, but never really... They couldn't fall on the edge. They finally got this morning off the bowling of Ben Bott. He's finished with figures of 3 for 28. And Olsen with a 17 run lead on first innings. This game, as I said, will certainly play out through the afternoon. When you'd uh, you know, have a crack at Olsen in a second inning, see if they can dismiss them cheaply and set themselves up a target to try and chase down later on this afternoon. You'd think if, uh, if Olsen can get through unscathed, probably through to about the middle, uh, halfway through the middle session this afternoon, there might be, uh, it might be curtains for the Tigers. So, the ground crew bringing the roller out to give them another roll. So we'll be back in a few minutes to, uh, to see how Olsen go in their second innings. Let's hope this grand final's still got a few twists and turns in, in the left. It's been a joy to watch so far. You, know, you, you feel like there's still could be a little bit left in it as the, as the afternoon goes on.
Welcome back to the Tri Recreation Ground where Olsen's second inning is about to start here in this thrilling Cricket North West Grand Final. Managed to uh, prize the final wicket out this morning. That of Riley Stafford caught behind by Jordan Kelly. Nice catch down low up to the stumps. Winded all out for 2.32, 17 runs short of the Olsen total. So, interesting to see what the how they go about this, we they clearly need to get some early wickets here. Joined by uh, 
Sheffield bowler Aidan Marshall in the commentary box. Good to have you, Aidan. Morning, Cully. Morning, all. Thrilling. To, well, it's been a great grand final, and uh, t- just the tenseness around the ground this morning, you could just feel, couldn't you? No, it was, it was enthralling stuff. Riding every ball, you could, uh, you could hear... Yeah. You can hear every dot, every ball that Riley survived. The, uh, the when you boys were getting around him, I, I. Uh, you, you, how do you feel for Paul? Oh, someone who's batted down the, at the tail in a number of it, times. You, it's, <laughs> it's a bit of it's a tough one because you're obviously out there doing a job for your team. It's about the main first ball on the hip there of uh, Kelly. Kelly helps himself. To a snap leg by. You've kind of got to convince oh, yourself that it's not your job. Yeah. When you're batting that low, um, obviously it doesn't help you at the at the time. But I always feel that me and Sam Robinson have had a lot of good partnerships together batting batting down very low. And it's always because we tell each other, well, this isn't our job. The top order's let us down, so we'll do what we can. Yeah. But it sort of doesn't help you at the time. So Val Benaney. Been an excellent form for the Tigers. So he's, he's, he's been a bowler. I think it's his second year at the club now, and he's he's come on in leaps and bounds this year. Hasn't he's he? a very very good bowler. He's very skillful, very clever. So Melbourne, he's three for thirty nine in the first innings. He can bowl all day. As well. Yeah, he's, he's just he's just got net. Doesn't doesn't strike you as the fittest fittest bloke in the world, but it's very economical action. He can just. Bang away all day for the Tigers. There are a few blokes like that when you do day one. Yeah. <laughs> Just punish so we, we them. Mentioned Andrew, we've mentioned Andrew Davison plenty of times in the comments. Sorry, Todd Chodge, haven't you? Yeah, Dave, I was here yesterday. He's here again today. I yeah, thought yeah. I spotted him in the grandstand. Yeah. So Val Benoni, 41 wickets uh, this year up until the grand final uh, uh, at 15.63. So uh, when you're bowling and win you every second game, you're probably going to go for a few runs because of it's such it's a small ground, but uh, yeah. it's a very good bowling average. As Pierce gets in behind that one. So, when you'd certainly be looking for some quick wickets here, and then I suppose you, you can get those first couple out, it, you can start to change the way Olveston uh, start approaching their batting, can't 100%. you? The Olveston, with the exception of maybe Snare, everyone else likes to score. Yeah. So, if you can, if they go back in their shell, I think it'll, be, it'll make things very interesting. Whereas, if they just go out there and play naturally and pile the runs on. I reckon the pool stumps at lunch. There's, he's just nudges that one between mid wicket and mid on there. He gets an easy single, he's off the mark. Obviously, none for two. I find it hard to bowl in these situations as well because I find personally, I go hunting for wickets. Yep. You aim too much at the stumps and you. Bowl, bit, bowl a bit straight. Yeah, you push too hard for wickets and you end up just, instead of just going back to hit the top of off start, put the pressure on and. Yep. Let things take care of themselves. No, you've got two on the leg side at the moment. Win you. I'm very reluctant to have a fine leg, I've noticed. When you... Yeah, so obviously they back Val and they bowl that off stump line, don't they? I always feel, I always feel much more comfortable with a fine leg because if you yeah. strain the stumps, okay, yeah. You get, you get, yeah, I know it's a bad ball, but it gives you the option to at least attack the, stu- attack yeah. the stumps a bit more. So, one over down here at Latrobe, and obviously second innings, they're none for two. And their lead is up to 19. And, uh, so, mate, a, a, a tough end of the season, obviously, with a broken, nu- broken knuckle, was it? Uh, dislocated little finger. Dislocated little finger. Yeah. It wasn't so much the, the injury itself that kept me off the park, it was more the work was yeah, going to claim, which, yeah. Yeah, stuff sucked, but... Anyway, it is what it is. It is what it is. But uh, obviously you'd, you'd lost a bit of weight in the off-season and got yourself nice and fit. And yeah. You felt like you were bowling pretty well this season? 100%. I'm probably the fittest I've ever been and the most injured I've ever been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Kids out there, I'm not sure there's a correlation between the two, but do get yourself fit for cricket season. It helps, helps, helps you bowl a lot of overs. And cricket's a lot more fun when you fit. Oh, it's Chettle's yeah. first ball there. Is the proverbial looser. <laughs> and... Uh, John D. Blake's take that nearly in front of second slip, I reckon. He's army. <laughs> no, nah, it's more fun when you fit. I, yep. I used to find that when we were doing the warm up and playing warm up games, I used to, as a very competitive person, I used to hate losing. But 
I used to always sort of, oh, if I had to really reel myself in during the warm up so I could actually yeah. bowl when I got out there. But yeah. now, no, it's far more enjoyable. Sure. It's better. Well, still wider than I stump and on a much better line that one. Let through the keeper by uh, Pierce. And did, did you feel like, like on a Sunday after a game, so after you bowl a long spell on the Saturday, did you feel you pulled up better after on the Sunday as well? Yeah, I, I've always thought I've had a fairly economical action. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, not too much. So I've, yeah, but no, I think being fitter definitely made it easier to open the batting and open the bowling. Yep. Whereas when I did a couple of years ago, it was there was no chance. It was tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure every Cricket Northwest team has seen me cramp up the yeah. dollops <laughs> yes, late in the day. Can, can, can uh, attest to that. So no, I managed to avoid the avoid cramps this year, which was good. Yeah. So Chettle, he's, uh, he's fixed the line back up. He's, uh, he's still just bowling short of a length here. Pierce not taking the bait, though. Oh. Oh. He's, all these old and... Openers certainly don't mind it playing their shots. I think it's going to be pretty watchful here for the first first half hour or so. Yes. And saying that, if they can get the ball along the ground when there's still a bit of dew on the ground and get a bit of moisture into that ball. Nothing worse. <laughs> nothing worse. Yeah, if you, yeah when, when you come to a ground, you can see it's, it's still dew on the ground. You know it's still going to be there at 10.30. Is that one of the, the great fears for an opening bowler? Horrible. Oh. Worldwide again there by Cheddle. What about the boys? Win you? Oh, uh, it was really interesting. I think I chatted to one of their players this morning and I said, How's the nerves? And he said, Oh, I'm not too bad. He said, uh, I, I think there was a, I think they were pleased that, that the team was able to fight back and get into a position to win. And I, oh, to, to get a first innings lead. And, um, but uh, yeah, certainly. From where they were, it's probably going to be a bonus if they had got the had got the first innings. That would annoy me as a as a bowler. If we kept having shy the stumps there. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Looks good if you can pull it off. Yeah. Well, it just don't look, don't, look, don't seem to be too many winning guys out there with towels. No. Hell of an from Greg. Oh, I said, first, first ton, you know, first grade grand final since 2004 2005 decider. When, uh, I'm pretty sure it was Adrian Hall scored one for the win um, So we're going, we're going back a long, <laughs> long way. Before this. And as you would know, having played for a while now, Aiden, there's been some horribly low scores in oh. Greg Northwest grand finals. When it comes to grand finals, people forget out of that. Yeah, they, they, just, you, would, you would swear they're bowling with a two-piece ball that's, that's moving around corners 100%. and bats are the size of bloody toothpicks. Yep. I remember I was on the back page of the Advocate <laughs> and the grand final we got bowled out. I think we got bowled out for 40 yep. odd. And I was on the back page getting me up off stump. Off the <laughs> Sam Murford? I think it was. I think I remember that. Uh, yeah, no, no. I've scored a couple of them for grand finals, <laughs> which... You just shake your head as to what's happening out there. Blokes completely lose their minds. And it's and in the grandstand, you know, at, at the start of the innings, there's this, well, yeah, what well, And then all of a sudden, once the wickets start falling, it's just deathly That's silent. Like, you, you can sense it. You yeah. sense it, oh, the rot's on here. It just goes We're through, on. it just runs through the team <laughs> like, a, like a virus, and uh, all of a sudden, you just you know what's going to happen. So, Valvinane in again. Oh, Kelly up on his toes defends that one. Originally attacking field set here by Wynyard. Right. Slips Gully, backward point, point cover. Mid on, mid off. Man, just back to the square. And man, short mid wicket. Kelly goes in the attack. Ooh. Don't think it was a drop catch. Might have just fallen short, but well fielded there. Stafford? Not with Stafford, I think. He can play a Pats from his teammates, good to see. He'll be, uh, he'll be disappointed after a 
his heroic innings coming to an end there this morning, caught behind off the bowling of Bot by Kelly up to the stumps, but uh, he's uh, he'll be um, he'll be talked about for many years to come, Riley Stafford, I think, at the Windy Creek Club for his efforts. So Balbanane in again. <laughs> the Greg, Greg Sharman is going to make sure his team do not go down quietly. A very distinct voice, yes. Greg. And, and just a competition overall this year, Aidan, of Bernie and Denver on points wise were off the pace for most of the two days, but it was certainly. Oh, and Mitchell there at mid-off. And Kelly opens his account, gets two, thinks about three, comes back to the third, will make it easy. Lovely drive there by Kelly, gets three. Obviously none for six. But, but you know, you, there was no bad team in the competition this year, was there? there was, every team could, could travel another team on their day. I think there's always... You always single out a few blokes in each club that you're like, oh, they're the big wicket. Yeah. But I found that... When we'd single like, Tats, Ty yep. Adele, yep. for Devonport, obviously, like, you think he's the big wicket. And you sort of get him and you're like, oh, we're in And then every game we played, there seemed to be someone... Someone oh, else. Someone else. Yeah. score 50 and you're like, okay. Yeah, you, did, you didn't sort of think about him and yeah. you're planning too much. Yeah, and then, so I think, I mean, the last... Oh, Maybe five years. The average score's gone through the roof. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's good, good to see. Yeah, bowl was dominated. Bowl was dominated back five, six years ago, and now people, like people didn't score hundreds. No, but now there's a hundred every yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. And bowlers got to work for their wickets. Correct. It's yeah. that's why, and that's why it should be. Do you think that's as well on any outside of standard? Something appears. That's also there's correlation. The standard of wickets has probably got a bit better Hunting. as well. Yeah. Especially, I don't know, up in Sheffield, the standard wickets up there is, is yeah, they've been really good wickets the last couple of seasons. Yeah, I think we managed to make them look a little bit better as well. <laughs> like, there seems to, be, there seems to be this thing where we, you go out there and it looks like an absolute yeah. goat track and it would play fine. Yep. You, like, you still get the old Sheffield shooter, don't get me wrong. But, um, but nah, I think the standard of facilities around the coast have oh, yeah. certainly come on leaps oh, and bounds. I, I, I don't think... I don't think some of the players on the North West Coast realise how lucky they are some of the facilities yeah. we have here 100%. on the North West Coast. Like this, this ground, for example, you could obviously has, has, has hosted Women's Big Bash this season, regularly hosts uh, Women's Cricket Tasmania Premier League, hosted a Premier League semi-final for the Great Northern Rose men's team last season. And uh, yeah, it's, it's certainly... The premier first cricket ground on the northwest coast, but the yeah, outfield, Bernie, yeah. Bernie's, Bernie, Bernie's, Bernie's, the outfield's good. like a carpet out of Bernie. Yeah. It's like same here, but yeah. Devonport certainly improved. Yep, it's, uh, it's back in contention now for for higher games. So Winyard, Winyard's moving to the footy ground next season, and everything from what uh, Les Allen and and they said uh, yesterday that you know they're, they're investing there in. In facilities and uh, and equipment to make sure that ground's in good nick, good nick all year round. That's Chettle in again, oh, fended away there by Kelly between Gully and Point. Will come back for two. And the score goes up to nine for eight. Kelly up to five. So the crowd continuing to build here. Little trade recreation ground. Unfortunately, they, they, if you if you come ten minutes late, you missed uh, in the end of the windy innings. But uh, so there's still plenty of cricket to play out in this one. We need to be on the charge here to try and get a couple of quick wickets and just change the old mindset. But uh, so far, Kelly and Pierce have negotiated. Okay. Oh, ooh, he ended that one now. So I've stuck. Come forward. Probably didn't need to play it at the end, and looked like deck made it decked away. Mm -hmm. I thought I heard something. I thought Barry, Barry, I actually Barry heard, yeah. here in the commentary box. Yeah, yeah, I actually heard the same thing. But uh, clearly it was maybe back clipping pad or something. But there's no appeal from the for the Wynyard uh, fielders. Non striker giving some uh, gentle advice just to let, let those ones know. <laughs> so Chetlin again. 
short and a, a flat bat, flat bat swat back down the ground by Kelly, who held himself to two. That ball just picking up a little bit more moisture on it on its way down to the uh, southern end of the ground. He's up to seven, the score none for 12. Oh, sorry, none for 10. Kelly on seven, Pierce on one. The Olsen lead now 27. Generous cloud cover in the sky at the moment. Uh, the bowlers might be getting a little bit of. Oh, it's an interesting shot there from Kelly. Bottom edge. He does like playing his shots, Jordan he Kelly. You're, as a bowler, you always think you're, a, you're in the game. You're in the game with Jordan. He doesn't. He won't show arms no. too many. But, uh, he's uh, he's moved up the order this year. He's usually, usually batted probably six or seven for the Black Caps. Last season, but uh, in, the, in, the, in the need of an opening batsman, he's put his hand up and. Oh, oh Kelly, it's high, it's going to go over the slips yeah. though. That'll be four. One bounce, two bounce, three bounces over the line for four. But Kelly went on the attack there, it was short enough, certainly short enough, he top edged it, went over the top of first and second slip and down to the boundary for four. So Kelly this year with the bat. Uh, do, 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 do. 236 runs at 18.15. Jack Pierce, uh, Jack Pierce, 173 runs at 19.22 off 11 games. But it's the it's the it's three, four, five, and six are the key for Olves, aren't they? They're the, they're the, they're the big guns. They that very deep, Olveson. What what um what number Ruth French coming on? Eight. Eight. Destructive batsman number eight. Yeah. Made an A-grade central last year. Missfield there by the man at cover. They're going to come back for a second. Oh, very positive running between wickets here by the Olsen openers. Kelly gets another two. Moves up to 13. And the score, none for 16. Into the over as well. Chettle, he's gone for nine off two, uh, 11 off two. And none for 16, the Black Caps lead now by 33. Yeah, when you've you get through the openers and then it's all of a sudden it's Winwood, DeVries, Wormsley snare. Yeah, it's yeah. Every you look up to who's coming out and you're like, oh no, yeah. yet again. And so just going through the figures there, you got uh, snare average forty six point two seven, Winwood forty one point one nine, Wormsley forty point nine three this season. DeVries he probably averaged better for the Raiders this year, I reckon. But he certainly made some handy runs for the Raiders this year, but overall. Uh, 296 runs at 37 for the Roos. They included a that does include his century in the Great Northern Cup semi final. So yeah, some quality through the middle order there for the Black Caps. So you think uh, all of them on their day when you're bowling to them, you think they're bats about three yeah. foot wide, especially on one of those docile UCI over wickets. Mm -hmm. Into Pierce. Yes. And a uh, well run single there from the Olsen openers there. Excellent cricket. Pierce gets his second run, none for 17. When you've got that understanding, the two bats have got that understanding, and you can just basically tip and run, it's, it's good to watch, isn't it? It's very, very frustrating. And very mind. frustrating for a fielding team. <laughs> or as a bowler, because you think you bowled a half decent that, ball. There's nothing wrong with that to no? do. On or about off stump. Just brought him forward. And then yep. bang. Yep, so change here from the winyard in the winyard field. Sharm's going to bring himself into short cover to try and uh, nullify it. An imposing figure, that short cover. Oh, yeah, Boldy! That's a jaffa. That's an absolute seed from Bellamanani. That's come back and got through the defence there of Kelly. I don't think Kelly. Now, too many arguments there. That was a very, very good uh, delivery. Let's see if we can uh, find it on the replay here. 
He's got a knack for bowling. Absolute seeds as yet. So here we go. Melbourne into Kelly. Oh, that's oh, definitely yeah. that's definitely yeah, come back, back in. Yep. And Kelly. Yeah, Kelly, you just shake that and say, well, too good for me. Too good for me. So Kelly bowled for 13. First Olsen from wicket down. One for 17. To the crease comes Alex Winwood, the Olsen captain. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised it's taken this bloke this long to send me a message during the grand final. Guy Gray, who clearly doesn't know how to use either my cricket or play HQ <laughs> or have YouTube on his phone, asking what the state of the game is. <laughs> Guy, get, 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 it get, get it together. Get it together. Get your phone together, mate. Or get to the ground and come and watch the game, mate. So I'm surprised it's taken that long to send me a message. <laughs> So, we'll do an update from uh, West Park here in the second row grand final between Burnley and Olsen and the Black Caps. Looks like, uh, looks like we may have had a delayed start there for some reason at West Park. Maybe, I don't know, a little bit of rain. Obviously, there's a couple of clouds here that look like might have a little bit of precipitation in them, but uh, none for 11 off two overs, Olsen. With uh, Black Walston home on, he's got all 11 of them, and Andrew Van Tattenove, not not out. So, that run chase is underway game there. Game on the over. Game on. It's, uh, yeah, Bernie made 230 yesterday, thanks to uh, Nick Granger's um, 83 and 43 from Lockie Roberts. Halfway to the boundary, 45. Mm. It's just sort of yeah. happy to concede a single there, really, isn't it? Not really uh, six or an half a dozen, is it? So, Jack Pierce now. This is well and he's tail up. Oh, well played. Time through between mid wicket and mid on there. Take get one, come back for an easy second. And it's two to Pierce. And moves up to four. Hard. Nice and straight in there by Pierce. In the over from Valbonani, three overs from him, one for eight. Olsen, one for 20. Losing uh, Kelly that over. Bowled by beautiful delivery by Valbonani, the deck back in. The lead is 37. And we're about 40 minutes into today's play at the Latrobe Recreation Ground. Apparently a damp square at West Park <laughs> this morning. Interesting. Oh, I thought it was interesting to see what happened there. Mm. Oh. Premier League Grand Final down in Hobart. 
Lindisfarne in their second innings, 5 for 149. That gives them a lead of uh, around 200 and uh, what have we got there? About 290 over University, so it's just about game over there, mm. you would think. Mm-hmm. After an <laughs> extraordinary first day of cricket in that game. So Chettle again. Oh, yeah. the that one outside off stump. As a, to have a team nine for one, what was it nine for? Uh, uh, let's find the score here again. When Lindisfarne were nine for one fifty three as a as a fielding team and a bowl and as a bowler you're thinking oh yeah no we'll, nah happy days we're right. happy days we're pretty happy with that opening bats are starting to shadow yeah, that yeah, thinking yeah. about yeah. knowing about their business curator goes to start maybe yeah. sit on the roller <laughs> to get it ready get ready to go. 200 runs, 200 runs later. Unbelievable. Unbelievable cricket there from Charlie Wakeham and uh, Matthew Wilkie. Wakeham, 215. Didn't make, didn't make too many in the second. I got one in the second. He was probably a bit tired. But yesterday, Chettle was, uh, he'd had a good season the season before, and everyone thought he's, he's one to watch for this season. Then, unfortunately, he had a, a scooter accident, I think, and he's he's only just come back, uh, played a couple of A reserve games, and now he's just come back into the team. Well, obviously, come back in at the right time, but uh, yeah, it was a disappointing to see the young kid uh, have to miss a fair bit of cricket. Because mm. he's, uh, he's got a nice run up to the crease. Bowls yeah, at a, yeah. Bo- yeah, bowls at a nice pace. So Adam Daniel's not bowling this No, shoulder, shoulder. Shoulder injury for uh, young Adam, apparently. So it just it probably it's probably one area that we need to probably just need to bolster their bowling stocks a little bit. I think, yeah, obviously you don't want to burn Balabanani out. Obviously he's bowled a lot of overs. She's Sandy Girigota bowled, bowled a lot of overs as well. They probably just need that one extra front line bowler to sh- shoulder the load. But they certainly, they certainly have to look like, Olsen looked like they were going to make 300 on the opening day. They they rein things in nicely in the middle session, through, mainly through uh, Santa Girigator and, and Riley Stafford. line well left there by Windward knows where he's off stump is. Right. It's overdone. Thanks for your little stint in the commentary box, Aiden. My pleasure, Coley. Look You're forward to final. Yeah, look forward to seeing you injury free next year hopefully. He's open. He's open. Thanks mate. So one for twenty off six overs now the black caps. Lead by thirty seven. Straight to the field there at mid off.
Oh, these clips that one off the pads. Just beat Sharma there at short mid wicket. A little bit of boundary. First boundary for Jack Pearce for the morning. Takes a for one for 24. Well timed. <laughs> Unfortunately, he didn't really time to the waiting mitts of Sharman there at short mid wicket. Sharman's dive to his right was in vain, and the ball ran all the way to the boundary for four. Oh, bowls him! Great comeback there from Valabonini. Pierce came forward. Looks like my, no one might deck back again from Valabonini and rattled into the top of the stumps. Bowls went flying. Great bowling there from Yasawi Valabonini. Olsen now 2 for 24. Pierce bowled for 8. All of a sudden, just a little bit of interest still in this game. A couple of quick wickets there by the Tigers. Brings Braden DeVries to the crease. We'll take a look at the replay of that dismissal. Great bit of bowling by Valvin, eh? Great line and length. So that's a good bit of the replay here. Valvane in. Foolish to may have just kept a smidge low, but uh, looked like it certainly come back in off the seam and got through Pierce's defence, and he's been bowled for eight. So Olsen, two for 24. Lead by 41. But uh, the Tigers, just with their tails up at the moment, a couple of Early wickets. If they can keep this momentum going, they could be batting again this, late this afternoon and maybe try and chase down a target. Wouldn't that be an exciting run and chase? You expect Sandy Girigo to, to be certainly opening innings if there's any sort of run chase on. I expect Sharman to move himself up the order as well. Still plenty of water to go under the bridge in this one though. Olsen need a partnership here. The two openers have been dismissed. Valvanani striking both times, rattling the stumps. Oh. Well played there by DeVries first up. In the middle of the bat, along the ground. This game far from over here at the Latrobe Recreation Ground. Some suggest that there might have been hands shook after the first innings was up, but uh, that certainly wasn't the case. And I'm expecting this one to, to go deep into the afternoon. Oh. He's left that one outside. Off stump. Successful over there from Valabonini. Gets the wicket of Pierce for eight. Olsen, two for 24. Lead by 41. Six, uh, seven overs gone. Those who have just tuned in, Wynyard's uh, stubborn resistance ended in the second over of the day when Ben Bott caught the outside edge of Riley Stafford's bat. Nice catch down low up to the stumps by Jordan Kelly. Ended Stafford's innings, uh, end up with 11 off 114 balls. Greg Sharman, 107 not out of 231 balls. Win it all out for 232. Bot finished with 3 for 28. Snare, 3 for 39. It's Chettle back in for the southern end. And Winwood tucks that one off to the leg side, but no run. So 3 for 28 by Bot, 3 for 39 by Snare, and one wicket each to French, Winwood, May, and Varner. So, certainly Sharman, despite his team being behind in the first innings, 
Peter Sharma certainly in the box seat for the Man of the Match award here. He's a fantastic century. Just nudges that one way to the leg side again. First innings, as I said, there's still plenty to play out here in this one. That's Chettle, long run up. Oh, and again, Greenwood. Straight delivery, and he's just able to successfully nudge that to the leg side for no run. Was the second grade, then none for 19 of 5.3 overs at West Park. Slightly delayed start there. A little bit of moisture in the surrounds. I'm not sure if they had some rain there at West Park or what happened there. Oh, Full off, on the off stump line there to Winwood, Winwood. Easily defends. It's certainly been a fantastic final series for Cricket Northwest, especially in first grade. Two oh, thrilling semi finals last weekend. Winyard knocking over minor premiers Latrobe by uh, by eleven runs in Olsen getting over line against Sheffield by just the one wicket. And then that that's continued into this weekend's grand final. Hope you've enjoyed all the coverage on the Cricket Northwest live stream over the last couple of weekends. Chettle in the Winwood. Winwood down leg side. He tried to flick it down towards fine leg where there's no fielder. Would have certainly got a boundary, but couldn't make contact. Blake tidies up behind the stumps. That's the over from Chettle. Four overs for him, none for 11. The Black Caps, two for 24 off eight overs. Cricket Northwest would like to thank all their sponsors for their support during the 2022-23 season. Naming rights partner, Bendigo Bank, Lion Co, Bernie Devonport, Launceston Toyota, Sports Power Bernie, Hersey Seafoods, Fonterra, Coastal Engineering and Belting, The Advocate Newspaper, Inspirations Paint, Cricket Tasmania, Choices Flooring Bernie, Dallin McCarthy Tyres, Plan Action, Whitehawk Apparel, Taz Freight, and Commercial and Rural Refrigeration. Some great sponsors there for Cricket Northwest. Some have been uh, with the association for a very long time. We thank them for their support. So, Albanani. And the lead start, Winwood. That's right, DeVries gets an easy single there to get off the mark. Oh, some two for 25. All the drinks have just made their way over the club rooms. Just, I was boys just going on the bike track at the moment. Column and 80. Bowls to Winwood. Winwood clips that one off the pads. We'll get one and we'll come back for an easy second. Just, Ballamani, just straight off line there. And Winwood just, uh, just a little clip off the pads there. Didn't have to put too much effort into it. He moves up to three in the score. Two for 27. The overall lead now 44. Oh, 
hey, that one might have just kept a little low. There's been a couple that just, just haven't quite had the bounce that uh, the batsman would have expected, especially at that end. Then it goes down just as a little bit of gardening. So, uh, something the you know, some batsman just got to be careful of, and Valmont is certainly looking to exploit. Stump that one left alone by Winwood. forward and that one that decks into the right hander decked away from the left hander just beat the outside edge great bowling by the winyard opener so he's had a fantastic season 41 wickets at 15.63 coming in this game a deserved selection in the uh, Cricket Northwest all-star team Try to remove the bat from that one, but just jumped slightly and uh, ran off the face. Fortunately, there was uh, no chance of a catch. Goes down to short five man there for a single. Winwood up to four, two for 28, Alston after nine overs. So just going through that all star team for this season the openers were Brody Hayes and Callum Morse. Followed by Nick, Bernie Captain, Nick Rebel, Alex Winwood, Jacob Snare, Alex Kings, the wicketkeeper and also named Captain, Tristan Weeks, Mark Simmons, Matthew Varner, Yasawi Valabanani, Blake Weeks and Josh Wormsley from Olsen was named 12th man. So pretty talented line up there. Even uh, Sandy Garagota, the criminal West player of the year, couldn't get, get in the All-Star team. Had a good season, Dillard, but... Uh, he had to get past plenty of other spinners and plenty of other top water batsmen to get in there. And he, uh, based on pure stats, he couldn't get there. Winwood clips that one down the fine leg for an easy two. He moves up to six, two for 30 in the Black Caps. So some of the other first grade award winners, as we mentioned, Sandy Garagoda. Took out the Cricket Northwest Player of the Year award on 14 votes. That's uh, judged by the umpires. The Hersey Seafoods Most, uh, Most Valuable Player Award, which is a points-based award, that went to Nick Revel from Burnie. 1,030 points, thanks to his 579 runs, 22 wickets, and eight catches. The Great Northern Cup Player of the Year was Mark Simmons, the Sheffield player, on 10 votes. Then Hillhouse House Medal went to uh, Alex Winwood. Went to Olsen Captain Alex Winwood, who uh, I think uh, that's voted on by all the other teams, and uh, I think he's he swept the award there, he swept all the votes. A magnificent season by Winwood. 2020 player of the year was Sandy Girigata from Wynyard. The first grade batting trophy, the Danny Buckingham Trophy, went to Brody Hayes for his 447 runs at 63.86. The David Mullet first grade bowling average trophy went to the Trove spinner Tristan Weeks for his 29 wickets and a very miserly average of 9.62. And the wicket keeping award, Jonty Blake, who's uh, in action here today, 28 dismissals, 24 catches, and 4 stumpings. So, just a bit of a delay here, I'm not sure what we're waiting for. But, uh, so, so Sandy Urigo has gone in the field at short leg there. It's an interesting field here for for Winwood. So there's the short leg in. Sharman's just in front of square. And then they've got a fielder probably about 10 metres behind. 
10 metres behind the square, uh, 10 metres to the left of the square leg umpire as well. So there's a bit of a, a short pitched theory here from Chettle that thinks he can get Winwood out on the leg side. And he gets in behind that one, just defends it back down the offside. So just continue on with the Cricket Northwest Award winners for this year. In the uh, women's first grade competition, it was pretty much the Montana Bradley show. The Winyard Superstar th won the batting trophy with 314 runs and averaged 157. Won the bowling trophy with 17 wickets at 7.06, including a best of 6 for 5. She, she couldn't take out the wicket getting award. That went to Sam Hardy from Sheffield. That's Chettleton again. Oh! Interesting ploy there from Winwood. He tried to get inside that short, short of a length ball and bring it down here towards fine leg. Couldn't make contact and Blake tidied up behind the stumps. The Hersey Seafood MVP award went to Montana Bradley for her 314 runs and 17 wickets, seven catches and two runouts, 726 points altogether, and. There was no shock when she also took out the Player of the Year award with 23 votes, which is a huge tally. Chetlin again. Oh, great shot by Winwood. Step, stepped inside it and just clipped it off the pads for six. What a shot. It sailed towards the Latrobe Creek club rooms there. Well, that's a good way of spreading those fielders that were in close on the leg side there. Hit it clean over the top of them. That's a magnificent shot from Winwood. Couldn't have timed it any better. It's gone down towards the back of the club rooms there. They've retrieved the ball now. But that, uh, that's sweet timing from the Alveston skipper. So in second grade, men's second grade, the batting board went to Olsen's Jacob Smith, 258 runs at 51.6. The bowling went to the Trobe medium pacer, Zach Nicole, 17 wickets at 13.35. The wicket keeping award, Connor Heinrichson from Sheffield, 32 dismissals, a great year behind the sums for the gloves for young Connor, 27 catches and five stubbings. And the overall player of the year award, as voted on by the umpires, went to Devonport's Shazad Rule with 11 votes. So Chetlin again. Better director there from Chetl. Winwood just defended to the leg side there. And that's the end of the over. 10 overs down, 2 for 36. Winwood on 12, DeVries on 1. The lead, the Alveston lead, is now 53. So just looking at the uh, secondary grand final at West Park, none for 24 in the ninth over there, Alveston. Alveston home on 21, Van Tattenove on Three and uh, made a pretty steady start to their run chase, chasing Bernie's total of 230. So I think uh, that's certainly going to be a first innings result game there at West Park. I lost a bit of time this morning, so I'll make that up and play an extra half hour tonight. So I expect that uh, game to fully go the distance. Olsen oh, been in good form in the bat the last two games. Balamanani back in the bowl here from the northern end. Asking questions of DeVries. DeVries just defends that to the leg side. Cloud cover still about here at the Trail Recreation Man. I think the forecast is uh, probably not going to clear either. It's going to be around all day, so maybe just a little bit extra, cropping the bowlers out slightly. A little bit extra cloud cover. Well, that's probably slightly uh, 
pants without by the cool, coolest conditions. Get a bit of a check on the weather at the moment out here at La Trobe. So currently only around 17 degrees. So certainly by no means anywhere near the, the uh, lovely two days we had to start this game. 74% humidity. Beautifully timed, but couldn't beat the field of air at mid-off. Couldn't have hit that any better all along the carpet, but uh, straight to the field of air at mid-off, who is... Just trying to mod it, uh, mod it be Chettle, actually. around the ground at the moment. Bellman 80 in. He's up to the task. As I mentioned before, Bruce uh, spent a bit of time with the Great Northern Raiders this year and uh, held his uh, certainly Played pretty well for them. So, uh, we're just trying to drag up his sats here for the season. <laughs> oh, he gets one on leg stump there from Valvanani. He clips it down the fine leg. Feels they got a long chase. He gives him up. Four runs there to Braden DeVries. Valvanani offline there and just tucked around the corner nicely there by DeVries. He goes up to five and scored two for 40. So DeVries' season for the Raiders. Two hundred and ninety runs on average around twenty, so I'm in a couple of forties there, three forties, so that's certainly some uh, a good building block for young DeVries to move forward with the Raiders. to the leg side, no run. It's the end of Valbonani's over. He's got figures of 2 for 20 off 6. Olveston, 2 for 40 off 11. 2 wins to fall in the off innings. Jordan Kelly bowled by Valbonani for 13. Beautiful delivery that decked back off the seam. And uh, Pierce met us, Jack Pierce met a similar fate, bowled, out, bowled by Valbonani for 8 off 20 balls. They were 2 for 24, scored now 2 for 40. Thanks to a partnership here between Winwood, the captain, and Braden DeVries. The 12th man, they're just uh, running out, running back some helmets. Continues the attack from the Gilbert Street end here at Latrobe Recreation Ground. Oh. Oh. Works that one on the leg side, no run. So Winyard have abandoned the, uh, the the leg side fielders there that were in close. Still got a fielder, so a bridge arm um, mid wicket, and still got a fielder, probably around 10 or 15 metres to the left there of Mark Smith at square leg. As DeVries, ah, Winwood, sorry, goes on the drive. Can't beat Valbonani at mid-off. So, well, 
warm welcome also to our, all our viewers around the world, around Australia and around Tasmania. This third day, third and final day of the Cricket Northwest season. It's been a great grand final. Olsen getting a narrow 17 run lead after bowling winged out, getting that final winged wicket in the second over of this morning's play. Against the Ben Bott. Had Riley Stafford caught behind by Jordan Kelly. And we knew all out for 232. Yeah. Olsen, Olsen's second innings. A couple of wickets for fell early. Both openers back in the hutch. But uh, Winwood and DeVries now taking the swap for 2 for 40. Overall lead of 57. As they look to bat when you're out of this game. To hoist their 12th premiership. Great straight drive there by Winwood. Straight down the ground. They've got one, they've got two. Looks like it's going to pull up. No, it didn't. Great straight drive there by Alex Winwood. Beautiful to watch, left hander. It's another boundary for Winwood. He moves up to 16. Two for 44. Textbook drive there from Winwood. He's really, his batting's really come on this season. Always had the talent. But it's, uh, it's clicked this year, despite the added, burdens, the added burden of being captain of the team. He's led by his actions. Superb all round season. Coming into this game, 659 runs and 35 wickets for the season. That is outstanding cricket. Fields here, just working on the ball. It's, uh, it's picked up a little bit of moisture in, these, in this first hour or so of play today. A bit of a cooler conditions overnight, just leaving a, a bit of dew on the outfield. And, uh, very little wind about today as well, so nothing much really to, to dry it off. The sun really hasn't appeared much either. Sitting at about 17 degrees, so. That ball's that just picking up that moisture and just uh, helps negate any swing they might be able to get from it. Chettling again, well outside of stump, left by Winwood. It's the end of Chettles, six over, number 23, the Black Caps, two for 44, lead by 61. Scores in the second row grand final at West Park. Olsen, none for 33, so a very steady start as drinks come on the field here at the Trobe. Just a little bit later than usual, I think because of the uh, innings break. So Olsen, twos, none for 33. Walton home, 28 not out. Van, ha Van Tatano, five. Down in Hobart in the Creek Tasmania Premier League Grand Final. Lindisfarne, 7 for 178. So their lead is now over 300 in that game. You'd think the University will probably have a crack at them this afternoon, but uh, that'll be an almighty run chase if they can grab those. So, another entertaining first hour and a bit of play here at La Trobe. We need the resistance ended in the second hour of the day. On the bot had Stafford caught behind. And Olsen now looking to bat we need out of this game. They've increased the lead to 61, but uh, I'll certainly be looking 
to uh, get to, to get to lunch, probably still two down, and then uh, yeah, really just bat and bat and bat, and I still got then two. Really two of the better batsmen on the North West Coast, Josh Wormsley and Jacob Snead, are coming as well. So, plenty of work to do for the Tigers if they're to uh, get themselves another bat in this game. On a pitch that's uh, still pretty good for batting, although there has been the odd one or two who just maybe just kept a fraction low at the uh, at the southern end. But all in all, it's been a very nice cricket wicket prepared by curator Jason Sims and his team here at the Latrobe Council outfield in beautiful nick. And uh, it's been uh, superb conditions all around for the grand final. Players come back from the drinks break. So Val and Annie to continue from the northern end of the ground. Picked up both the Olds and Openers in the early stages this morning. Two beautiful deliveries that just look like they come back in off the scene and got through the defences of Kelly and Pierce. Val and Annie's going to change his angle of attack, he's going to come around the wicket, he's going to force the Olds uh, and uh, couple of and guys to come and change the uh, change the position of the sight screen, so Ben Botton, Matt Varner are going to do that, it's certainly a two man job these sight screens. Point and cover. He's going to get at least two. The ball will just hold up and they'll complete an easy two. DeVries on to nine, the score two for 48. So the yeah, outfield's just not quite running as quickly as it has the first couple of days. I think that's just that overnight dew has just slowed it down a little bit. Turn to the Olds and Batsman because if they can get some moisture into that ball, it makes it harder to bowl with. Well, wide there by Balabanani outside off stump. Certainly the best crowd we've had over the three days here this morning. on the eastern side of the ground. Nice little gathering over in the grandstands as well on the western side. It's Balvin 80 in again. And left line outside off stump by DeVries. It's only a very good scene ground here at the Trobe. Nice, uh, nice elevated position for the cars. We're in a great spot here in the bike club office. The old bike club office here in the uh, Northwestern corner of the ground, the uh, live stream camera. So pretty much what you can see on the live stream is 
where we're calling from. Okay. Oh, hit in the air by De Vries and the fielder there at uh, might be a cover point there. Let's try to see who it is. Might have been Scolier, I think. Just short. And when we're saying just short, we're talking half a metre short, I think. Uh, Albany in again on the leg stump. De Bruce can't beat the man there, just in front of square. So he's probably, Scolier's probably more just at a regulation cover, and then there's Sharman in a short cover for that drive by De Vries, and it nearly paid off there. up behind the stumps. So maybe done a little bit off the deck there or something. DeVries is doing a fair bit of tapping with the bat there on a certain area of the pitch. Over bowled. 2 for 22 for Valbonani off his 7. 13 overs in the books here in Olsen's second innings. 2 for 46. They lead by 63. About 35 minutes from the luncheon interval here. Second grade update from West Park. And there's a wicket's fallen. Olsen one for 33 off 12. Walston home is the player out. Caught Rowrotham and bowled Nathan Hayes for 28. So Van Tatnove has been joined by Sam Samuel Purton at the crease. Olsen one for 33 in the 13th over. That game also available on live stream. Switch over and then stage. Still plenty of cricket left in this one here at the Trobe. Chettle continues from the southern end. New seventh over, none for 23. Cross him. And Blake certainly had to just come to his right a bit to take that. Attack windward drives past Harvey there. That uh, extra cover. He will help himself to two. <laughs> DeVries. DeVries was keen on that. There's been a misfield out in the deep. Horrible mix up there. I'm not sure what happened. Just take my eyes off it. But uh, Winwood will pick up a third there. He moves on to 19. Olsen, two for 49. Lead now. 56, uh, 66. Oh, Baddie, Baddie. I'm not sure we made one of those little flick back moves there in the field that failed spectacularly. But there was three winning fielders chasing after it and they made a complete hash of it and presented Winwood with an extra run. Uh, let's 
like the way he is. The chat will just keep the batsman waiting. Here he comes now. He's in behind it, triples out to the offside. Tasmania Premier League Grand Final wins for 8 for 189 now. It's that lead around uh, 320. Full delivery driven by DeVries, but only straight to Sandy Girigoda there at cover. He's annoyed with himself there. DeVries, a low full toss. That he should have, uh, should have made greater use of, but just hit it straight to the winged coach. Keeps that one out from Chell. Good line of length there. And the wind is quick. It's the end of his over. Two for 49, the Black Caps after 14. Albanani continuing around the wicket here to the uh, pair of Olsen left-handers. Oh, oh, left line there by Winwood. Someone certainly didn't get up either. So maybe just that, just that bit of a patch there in that southern area, southern end of the pitch. Just uh, the bounce isn't quite as true as the rest of it. Beautiful drive there from Winwood. Charmin at short cover. It was only about half a metre to the left of him, but it was hit with such force. Charmin couldn't get the hand down in time. Another boundary to Winwood. He moves to 23. He's hit some lovely boundaries. Two, uh, two fours and a six. The six was a beautiful clip of his pads behind square for six. That, that drive, that was uh, beautifully played all along the ground. Olsen now 2 for 53. There's a line there from Balabanani, but Winwood up to the task. Defends it to mid off. Sun trying hard to make an appearance here at La Trobe at the moment. Still, uh, still some decent cloud cover about. I uh, get the feeling this cloud cover may be around for most of the afternoon. Eh? Look at any of the, uh, the great sunshine we had over the last two days. Three. And left alone outside of the off stump.
short, shorter length and down leg side on the hip. And Winwood just clips that away for an easy two. Harvey chases after it. Did he save it? Yes, he did. And Winwood will help himself to three. Easy runs there for the Olsen skipper. He moves up to 26. Olsen, two for 56. And our lead is now out to 73. This is some other Cricket Northwest awards to tidy up there from uh, Wednesday night's function at the Olsen Career Club. The umpire of the year again went to Scott Pearce. I think it's about eight, seven or eight years in a row now he's taken out that award. The Lord's Taverner's Spirit of Cricket Award went to the Sheffield Cricket Club for the second year in a row. The Ray Reid Spirit of Cricket Award, which goes to an individual for a great, a great display of sportsmanship, went to Sam Kroll from Wynyard, who uh, took a catch on the boundary up at Wynyard one day. I can't remember who it was against, but uh, everyone thought it was out. The batsman started walking. Kroll quickly called the batsman back and said, no, no, I stepped on the line, on the boundary line. And... Uh, yeah, so uh, the wicket didn't end up counting. And then the Gordon Rimmer, uh, Gordon Rimmer Club Championship Award for uh, overall consistency went to the Latrobe Creek Club, who uh, actually finished minor premiers in first grade, minor premiers in the women's competition, which uh, helped their overall tally of points there. But also, the, so I've got to mention the women's all-star team. Montana Bradley from Winnie, the captain. Kate Chaplin from La Trobe. Claire Alexander from Devonport. Georgia King from Sheffield. Martina Stephen from Devonport. Kylie Bramage from Sheffield. Sam Hardy, the wicketkeeper from Sheffield. Lucy Foote from Sheffield. Alex Hardy from Devonport. Hayley Marshall from La Trobe. Ella Scolia from Wynyard and Kayla Summers from Olsen. Bowling chains at Southern End. Sandy Girigoderon. Winwood goes on the attack. First ball slaps him. Through extra cover for four. Welcome to the crease, Mr. Sandy Girigoda, says Alex Winwood. Over pitch there from Sandy Girigoda, and Winwood helped himself there to another boundary. He's up to 30. Looking ominous, Winwood was batting well in the first innings until he missed a full toss from Sandy Girigoda. Olsen now, two for 60, leads 77. here. Sharman brings himself into a short cover. Oh, we will try to play across the line there, that one. But only gives a guess. Leading edge and just dribbled out to the offside. Oh, what up there? We will, oh, DeVries threw a bit run. Put a hover on the pitch, actually tear back. Dive back in, the throw was wide. Might have been from Stafford there. But DeVries tore off up the pitch and then was quickly sent back by Winwood. And DeVries had to dive back into his crease, full stretch. Got back, just dusting himself off now. Oh, sweep shot there by Winwood. They've got him. Fielder in there at leg slip. Went straight along the ground to him, so good bit of fielding. <laughs> Wim was looking at him like he didn't know he was there. Wondering where did he come from? So there was a short leg and a leg slip in. And he defends that one to the leg side. So four off the first ball there of Sandy Girigo's opening over. Well bowled after that. Olsen 2 for 60 off 16. 
the lead by 77. As they try and bat their way in the second innings to another Cricket Northwest first grade premiership. Update in second grade. One for 38, Olverston, as they try and make it a double in first and second grade. Van Tatnove on 10, Perth yet to score. Batsman out, Blake Walston home for 28. Court Regan Robotham bowled Nathan Hayes. Play still continuing in the, in the Premier League Grand Final in Hobart. Lindisfarne now 8 for 194 in their second innings after getting a lead of 143 in their first innings over University. Jared Freeman, 73, not out for the Eastern Shore Club at the moment. Balvinati, well, he's ninth over. This second innings, bowling to DeVries. Oh! DeVries could only guide that one to the fielder at uh, Gully there. Looks like, I mean, Damien Harvey, it was Harvey. Just got squared up a bit from Valvinani. And just an easy catch there by Boomer Harvey at Gully. There's the third wicket down for the Black Caps. Three for 60. Valvinani's got all three. Keeping his team in this game. So let's have a look at the replay. But, uh, it's a, it a, a strange sort of shot from DeVries. He never really committed to it. So in the comes of he ran the wicket. Just uh, it's a thick outside edge. And it's decked away a little bit after angling in and uh, easy to catch us there by Harvey in the gully. DeVries has to go for seven off 19 balls, one boundary. So the Tigers still just keeping their heads above water here. Valmanani, a great effort. All three wickets, three for 29 off 8.1 overs. Brent brings the wicket. Olsen superstar Josh Wormsley. Another left-hander. Score of over 10,000 runs in his career, Josh. This will be a big wicket for the Black Caps, if they can, uh, for the Tigers, if they can get this one. Uh, 20 minutes before tea, so I'm also hoping these two can safely negotiate the next six or so overs to tea, that's uh, a lunch. And the Tigers just, uh, just keep fighting these Tigers. Oh. Yes, as we continue that around the wicket line, good start. Left alone by Wormsley, not far away from the off stump. So, Albanani in again. Wormsley on the drive. Strikes the man at a uh, couple of point there. Full toss, driven by Wormsley, he helped himself to an easy single between Sharman there at short cover and the fielder was Chettle there at mid-off. Wormsley off the mark with a single, 3 for 61 the Black Caps. So 
Second wicket has fallen at West Park. Samuel Purton out for a duck. OBW Lockie Roberts. Olsen 2 for 38 as they chase down Bernie's first innings of 230. Good to hear from Winnie President Clayton Hawkins. He says they, our Tigers won't stop fighting. They've certainly shown great fight in this game. Fantastic effort from uh, just just to make the grand final was a fantastic effort by by Wynyard. They, uh, their two day roster form certainly wasn't anything to write home about after they defeated Devonport in round two of the two days and lost to Latrobe outright, lost to Olves and lost to Burnie. So coming in on a three game losing streak and I think many thought they were just making up the numbers in the four but they showed a great form reversal in the semi-final. Bad all day against the Trove to make 223, then skittled the Demons for 212. And then when all looked lost here on day two, great fight by Greg Sharman and Riley Stafford to get them to within 17 runs of the Olsen score until Stafford was unfortunately caught behind this morning off the, in the second hour of the day off the bowling of Ben Bott. But... Uh, They've shown plenty of ticker so far in this second innings, the Tigers. The Albanian especially. All three wickets, three for 61, the Black Caps after 17. Knowles, Knowles just want to, they just want to keep batting and bat when you out of this game. They don't really want to give them a chance of having a second innings and, a, and some sort of run chase. But, uh, Melbourne and he's had other ideas and continued on his excellent roster season form to take all three wickets and restrict the lead at the moment to 78. It's handy to go in again. Well, that's all of some left by Wormsley. Coming off uh, 25 in the first innings until he was caught behind by Johnny Blake off the bowl of Riley Stafford. So one of the number of holes and batsmen to make a start in that first innings. Five players scored between 20 and 30. They just couldn't find that one player to get him a half century or push towards a century. He so plays that one nice and tall off the offside. Scorer there in the first inning for Olsen was uh, Winwood with 45. 34 by Ben Bott batting at number number 10. And then in the 20s we had uh, DeVries, Warms and Snare, Chusen and Barr. As every batsman really made a start. Even the, the guys that got single figures were in for a good amount of time but uh, just couldn't capitalise against a Winwood attack that stayed disciplined and uh, made, the, made the Olsen batsmen make the mistakes. Plays that one out to the offside again. Sandy Gary go to Washley, played by Warmly again. That's the end of Sandy Gary go to second over. None for four off two. Olverson, three for 61 off 18 overs. Lead now 78. Albanani again into his 10th over of this innings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lose that one outside of the stump. So 
the shaman's removed himself from a short cover and gone to more of a uh, extra cover position. Beats the bat of Winwood. Just left him off the pitch there. Some of the deliveries that uh, got the right handed out that come into the right hands. That one just left Winwood off the pitch. Played and missed. Through Blake behind the stumps. So it happened to a first slip. We need more. Sandy Garrigo is more in a second slip. And Harvey at Gully. Oh. Gets him behind that one. Front foot, push it out towards Sharman there at extra cover. Strays on leg stump there. Melbourne 80. Winwood helps himself to a single off the pads to mid wicket. He moves on to 31. The score three for 62. Two. Lead by 79 after a 17 run lead on the first innings. They bowled, winged out for 232 in the second over this morning. Stafford, the last week of default, caught behind for 11. Sharman finished 107 not out. One of the great grand final knocks from Greg Sharman. Olsen so far. Kelly bowled by Valbonani for 13. Jack Pearce bowled by Valbonani for 8. DeVries caught Harvey by Valbonani for 7. Winwood currently 31 not out. Wormsley 1 not out. And then the Black Caps 3 for 62 as they look, they look to bat their way to safety and claim the Creek Northwest flag. In their 12th flag, their last success was last season in the decider out here at the tribe against Burnie. Before that, they enjoyed a magical run with flags in 15 16, 13 14, 12 13, 11 12, and 10 11. So, they run there four in a row and five out of six seasons. So they're a perennial finalist in the first grade competition, Olsen. They rarely have a bad year. They were always in contention. Foolish ball there. To Winwood. With a hit it back to the bowler. Winwood goes on the sweep. 
Peeled from the Wynyard fielders and Sandy Garagato, Scott Pearce quickly turned it down. Came to sweep you. That leg slip still in. There's a man at short leg. There's a guy about 20 metres in from the boundary behind square and a fielder at deep mid wicket. Then the Santagira goes over. 20 in the books. 3 for 62 with the Black Caps. We've got about 6 minutes to the luncheon interval. Two overs. Imagine these uh, some of his experiences. Josh Warmley at the crease will just make sure that there's no more than two overs. There'll be a bit of gardening done in between deliveries. We have a discussion with Winwood as well. We'll just take that, those few extra seconds to uh, to um, take guard. So. Not when they need to bowl again, but maybe he's adjusted his run up here. Maybe he's looking to bowl something other than his uh, medium fast deliveries. Maybe he's got a bit of a mystery spin option we haven't seen before. So I'm interested to see what happens here. Yes, looks like he's tweaking the fingers on a couple there. So we're about to see the Valabonati off spin repertoire. Let's see what happens here. Around the wicket to Wormsley. Wormsley goes on the drive first ball. Can't beat the man at mid-off. So a bit of a uh, Colin Funky Miller here about Valabonese. Changed from uh, changed mid innings from from pace to spin. And doesn't bowl him too bad by the looks of this. Wormsley. Drives again, but straight to mid off again. Uh, interesting move here by the Winyard's leading wicket taker. No one outside off stump, left alone by Warmsley. So I'm not sure if that one aid maybe it's just a. It's a Change of plans, or maybe picked up an injury, and I'm not sure, but the offspin is coming out okay so far. Wormsley hits that one to the onside and it helps himself to an easy single. Three for 63, Wormsley up to two, and the clock saying 12.26, so two balls to go on this over. And there's a bit of experience here from Wormsley after that single, just comes up the crease, talks to Winwood, just just gives you a, bit, a few words of uh, advice to how they're coming out there from Valabonati. Just soaks up another 30 seconds or so. This isn't his first rodeo. By any means, Josh Wormsley, experienced grand final campaigner. Short of a length there from Valabonati, but uh, we would just prods it to the offside. Feel it long on coming up. And Winwood defends to mid off, no run. Tidy first over of spin there from Valabonani. 21 overs gone, 3 for 63. The Black Caps, their lead is 80. 12 27 on the scoreboard clock, so I imagine we're going to get one more over in. Obviously, Bats will, will uh, make sure of that, I think. They know all the tricks in the book just to waste a few seconds here and there. Sandy Girago will be the bowler, so he'll, he'll be trying to push through this over as quickly as he can. Bowling here to Wormsley. Wormsley gets it straight back to Sandy Girago. Sort of stump. Oh, short of 
Len Corsi helps himself an easy single there to the left of uh, mid on. He moves up to three and the score of three for 65. Three for 64, sorry. The scoreboard was uh, too quick for me there on that one. Forward. Two balls left in the over. 12.29. Sandy Garagogues. Didn't waste any time bowling that one as soon as the umpire got back into position. Windward thick outside edge there down to third man. And they'll get an easy single there. Windward moves to 32, 3 for 65. Still 12.29. Last ball the over. Hormsey just keeping his composure now. Sandy, here he goes, just wanted a little change in the field. Sharman comes across a little bit in slip. Wormsley defends on the back foot. Winyard trying to race through here, see if they can sneak in one extra over before lunch. Mark Smith just casually walking towards the stumps. Everyone's doing a bit of clock watching here. There's 12.30, and they will get it in. They will get it in. Riley Stafford will be the bowler. Ultra Bassman just looked at the umpire there just to make sure that everything was uh, good to go there. I think they, they thought they'd beaten the clock, but uh, they clearly, clearly just were about five seconds too late. And Winion will sneak in one more over here. Sorry, it's Hodgetts on the bowl. The Winion captain. So, first delivery was played safely. Let, Winwood lets that one go outside off start. Looks like a bit of turn there as well. The way the keeper took that one. Oh, squeezed to leg side there by Winwood. Certainly will be the last over before lunch. Three deliveries left. Short. Well played there by Winwood. Through cover. He got himself to an easy two. As Chettle ties up about five metres in from the boundary. A bit too short there from Hodgetts. They have Winwood onto the back foot. And a nice shot through cover, extra cover area. Full delivery, well played there by Winwood. So that's be the last up, last ball before the luncheon interval. Olsen lead by 84, seven wickets in hand, well left by Winwood, very wide of the off stump, and that's lunch here. On the third day and final day of this Bendigo Bank Cricket Northwest Grand Final, Winyard all out for 232 in the second over of the day, 17 runs short of Alderson's first innings total on Friday of 230, uh, 249. Alderson their second innings, 3 for 67. The batsman out, Jordan Kelly for 13, Jack Pearce for 8, Braden DeVries for 7. All three wickets fell to Isawi Valabanani. But Olsen, certainly with the upper hand at the moment, they'll just look to back time through this second session coming up in half hour, and uh, they should bat their way to safety and their 12th A-grade flag. We'll be back in half hour for the second session of play. Enjoy your lunch.
Well, welcome back to the Tri Recreation Round, the second session of play on the third and final day of this Bendigo Bank Cricket North West First Grade Men's Grand Final. After a uh, tense first session of play this morning, we're sure Wynyard bowled out for 232, 17 runs short of Olverston's first innings total of 249. The Black Caps have gone into bat again. They lost three wickets in that session and uh, 3 for 67 with an overall lead now of 84. Alex Winwood, the captain at the crease, 34 not out. Josh Wormsley, 3 not out. So these two will be looking to bat some serious time this afternoon and just ensure this game uh, is safely in the keeping for the Black Caps and not give Winnie any sort of uh, sniff at having a run chase in the third session this afternoon. Resuming the bowling from the southern end will be winning coach Delan Sandy Garagoda. He'll be bowling to Wormsley. So the boys just signaling the scorers there. Play's about to start. Overrate that first session, so their inning day lasted the two overs. And you take off the three overs for changeover. And they bowled eighteen. They bowled eighteen in the rest of that first session. Uh, sorry, twenty three. So the scoreboard's not quite up to date there in terms of overs. As Wormsley drives the first ball of Sandy Garagoda straight to the fielder. It's still a little bit behind in the over eight, about three or four overs behind. I imagine there'll be a bit more spin bolt this over by uh, this session by Sandy Irrigator and Stafford as well. We saw uh, Val Benaney turn into an off spinner for his final over of his spell in the first session. Bowled them not too bad. And uh, Mason Hodgett's bowled the last over of the session with his spin as well. So. As the door opens to the country box, and it's the star of last year's broadcast, Andrew Leary Lizard. Welcome to the welcome to the box. G'day, Carly. How are we, mate? I'm very well, mate. Yeah. A very tense morning. You were you were here bright and early. At, uh, I was. How, how the, obviously, someone who's been involved in a few close grand finals. How were the nerves just as a non-looker this morning? Um, yeah, I definitely had a couple of butterflies this morning. Um, nowhere near as many as probably the players. Yep. I don't reckon many of them got much sleep <laughs> last night. I'm no. um, either to. No. Sandy Irrigada bowls and Wormsley defends back down the crease. Sandy Irrigada just flings it back to the keeper just to keep Wormsley honest. That's the end of a maiden for the opening over in the second session. Olsen 3 for 67 off 24 overs. So obviously, uh, learnt during the week. There's a bit of nice little, there's been some friendly banter at Marist Regional College <laughs> this week. Given the, there's a, a few Olsen, former Olsen players, there are staff members there, and the uh, the principal may, may be one one bloke who made a ton yesterday. Yes, um, we did play a little bit of a trick on him on Thursday. Uh, left a couple of uh, three or well, three Olsen caps on his keyboard <laughs> just just before he left his uh, for the day. Yeah, so uh, wasn't I, I will also it wasn't my idea. I was no. I was quite happy not to partake <laughs> in those shenanigans, but uh, didn't think didn't think uh, he'd need any any more poking. But anyway, he responded fairly well. Yeah, yeah, that was a, one of the one of the great grand final innings. Sure it was yesterday. Yeah. Great, uh, just a great study of concentration after it. he was dropped on two by Wingwood at uh, mid off in the uh, just he had a little bit of luck. A few little half chances here and there, probably in his first 50 runs, but after that he he uh, really knuckled down and uh, him and Stafford yeah, <laughs> really put the cat amongst the pigeons after. I imagine all, the Olsen boys thought they were, they were probably going to be batting midway through yesterday afternoon. Yeah, at 8 for 120, uh, uh, they would have been fairly confident. Um, and that's about when I started watching yesterday, actually, yep. online and 
Yeah, geez, they, well, Greg and yeah, the uh, and Riley, 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 and who's the other one? Uh, uh, Val Benani. Yeah, geez, they uh, about as well. And so speaking of Riley Stafford, the uh, young lady's coming on the bowl now from the northern end of the ground. Well, very well in, in his first innings, uh, Stafford figures of four for forty-six off twenty-two overs. Well, exclusively from this uh, top end of the ground. Yeah, he's got good control, hasn't he? Mm, for, a for a young, someone who used to roll, roll the finger, roll the oh. fingers over and cover yourself. Yeah, I, mean, I, I didn't. I haven't nowhere near as much control as what he's got. I uh, got a, got a few few of my wickets on half trays <laughs> and full tosses. Don't worry. Yeah, no, Riley's uh, certainly showing some promise. He comes, and on the money first up there. Ooh, let's it through to the keeper. And we've been talking over the first two days, it's, it's the 10 year anniversary of that uh, famous grand final at West Park between you guys and Wynyard, where the, the big big Dave just ran amok, but uh, you guys just had enough in the tank to, to get over the line. It was, that must have been a memorable. Yeah, just uh, from memory, the weather wasn't great over all three days. It was quite a challenging conditions over all three days, but. Uh, yeah, I felt like it was just blowy and overcast. Um, I don't think there was much rain, if any, for the for the three days. But oh yeah, that was an entertaining game of cricket. Yeah, no doubt about that. Stafford, a little bit fuller, drives down the ground as Winwood saved there by the fielder at uh, mid off. Saves at least three runs, but uh, Winwood still scampered through for a single. Winwood's on to thirty five. Score for three for sixty eight. So, so that when you guys uh, batted, well, you bowled Olsen out, uh, when you're down for about hundred, you guys come into bat, and you and Drew Allen got the score to none for forty nine, and things, you're thinking, oh yeah, no, we're we're going okay. And then Davo just all of a sudden turned into the Incredible Hulk, and yeah, well, I think I was the first wicket too, so you probably blame me for the for the rot, <laughs> but uh, oh, he. he he got one through me and then proceeded to uh, take another nine. <laughs> Pretty quick succession. What was the, what was the, when that's happening, what's the general vibe in the grandstands as you're sitting there, you and the boys sitting there watching it? Was it just sort of... Oh, it's probably a bit of disbelief, but, you know, he was steaming in, steaming in from that, um, from the road end and, yeah, it was a pretty, uh, pretty quick spell of bowling. He, um... He just sort of meanders in, but, by oh, jeez, he puts, he puts a fair bit of shoulder into it and, um... Yeah, yeah. So he just he just bowls at awkward length. Yeah, he's such, he's such a tall man to start. Yeah, that's right. And ah, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. In cricket terms, he just bowled a heavy ball. Like it was <laughs> the Andrew Flintoff type heavy <laughs> ball. Yeah, no, it was a, yeah. He was a, he took a lot of poles in his uh, short cricket northwest career. Yeah, no. Unfortunately, it's all cut down by injury, Andrew. But. Uh, Certainly made an impact during his time, but I think I believe he's here at the ground today as well. So yeah, I did see him earlier. So Sandy Irrigator to continue bowling from the southern end here, bowling to Winwood. Well, Winwood hits a full toss. Oh, he nearly got out again to a full toss. Got out in the first innings to a full toss, and that one was full toss on the hip. He just flipped it around the corner and fielded there. He's not, really, not quite deep back on square. He's probably about 15 metres in from the boundary. And now he's, come, he's, he's the horse has bolted there. He's, uh, now he's coming into a more of a traditional, uh, coming out of mid wicket. And Winwood escapes there. Greg was actually um, captain of Winyard in that, oh, in that, in that game. Final. And um, he was arrived late to right. so the yeah, game he, on the Friday. He had, a, he had, a school, he had some school yeah. business he had to attend to in the morning. That's it. And he, um, So Nick Pearce kind of stepped in uh, for the coin toss and obviously the start of play until until he arrived. And I, the word is, so Greg told oh, me. I think, I think I've heard this story. That he uh, gave Nick pretty clear instruction if he won the toss to bowl. Uh, given you know Davo's, yes. Davo's uh, yeah, yes. season and he running through teams and uh, yeah, so I think 
think Nick won the toss and battle. <laughs> <laughs> being, being, being a batter, I suppose. <laughs> and they'll bowl out for 100. Yeah, and, uh, and, and Greg arrived late and ended up batting about eight, seven or eight, I think, and yeah. came in and smacked the quick 50. And Yeah, but uh, oh, look, I'm not sure that was the reason they lost, no. but uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a funny funny side story to that final. So, Wolmsley, uh, the two batsmen have both called for the calf. Wolmsley batting in the, in the black floppy. So always good to see. Charlie a bit of Pete Hanscom there. Yeah. Good to see. Winwood's uh, just in the traditional black cap. Three for 69 off 26. Oh, so they look to uh, just extend this first innings lead to 17. That's up to 86 now. And uh, yeah, these two will certainly try to bat through to drinks in this session and, and onwards to get this game out of Winyard's reach. Getting numerous missed calls from uh, Sammy Lovett. <laughs> now, he, he seems to be a common theme when Olsen people are in the box here with me. Yeah. I think he was a, he was a, there might have been a couple of messages to Jars, Jimmy Smith, uh, yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Jay, Jay, James agreed to come to the box. I asked him at lunchtime, he goes, I'll come in after tea. Now, Tiffany was thinking by then, oh yeah, nah, the game will be safely in our keeping. Unfortunately, we... <laughs> When he did come in, the game was far from safely in their keeping. Shot there by Winwood. Goes to the boundary chase there. Well, stopped there about half a metre short. The boundary there by... Uh, I'm not sure that one. Is there a couple of Hodgetts. Yeah. I see. And uh, they get three. I did listen to... Uh the commentary yesterday afternoon, and yeah, certainly James's stint. I don't think he got many words. <laughs> he was a bit, uh, yeah, he was, he was just a bit on edge, J- <laughs> James. Plus, he had the races going as well. He might have had a couple of bets going in the uh, feature meeting at Flemington. I, uh, I went round to his house last night just for a couple of uh, quite, couple of quiet beers, just to just to calm him down a little bit. And this field there by Stafford off his own bowling, um, Warms will help himself to an easy single. Yeah, it, uh, after a very good first session and and sort of the first hour of the second session, just uh, everything just became hard work for Alveson after that. The the Winnie boys really applied themselves. Oh, oh Winwood went on the attack there, but just didn't quite time it. Yes, for the most part, has timed it very well today, Winwood, especially the ones he hit to the boundary for four. That's six he hit. Yeah, behind awesome. square, did he? <laughs> he picked that up. Nice. He clipped that nicely. And he's worked that one off the pad there for an easy single. Warmsley calls him through. And now the end of Stafford's over. Five runs off it. And the black caps. Three for 74. Winwood. Into the 40s now, Wormsley on four. The lead is 91. And the Black Caps just slowly edging their way to safety here. They've got the first innings low, so that's enough, that's all they need, but uh, they want to make sure they, they well, ideally don't want to give Winyard any time, but give Winyard as little time as possible. Uh, if they bat again in, the sec- in their second innings. So Sandy Girigoda into Winwood. Winwood works that to the leg side. Nice gap there. I think the way, uh, the way that these two bat, they won't be, they certainly won't be going in their shells or anything. No, they'll have to play their shots. They're both pretty naturally um, yeah, shot makers. Yeah. If, uh, I imagine if Snary comes in and things might slow down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he might slow the run rate down. There's Wormsley. Hits on, gets the misfield there from Valabanani. Sloppy bit of fielding there by the Winyard opening bowler. Wormsley gets an easy two. And just a couple of bits of sloppy fielding here to start this second session by the Tigers. Wormsley again hits it between extra cover and mid off and helps himself to an easy single. This is uh, sort of in a three-day grand final. This is the time of the, the grand final when 
they, those guys have done done the work in the off season in terms of fitness. Great shot there by Winwood, cuts it between point and cover point for four. Lovely shot. Quick hands there by Winwood. Quick hands, the quicker ball, tried to shoot one through. And just dropped the tag short mm. and wide. But yeah, the three day grand final, it's um it's a test of fitness, isn't it? And and just not so much physical fitness but mental fitness as well. Oh it is. I mean even backing up, you know, playing a two day game back to back can test can test your uh, your fitness and mind. So um, yeah, then adding another day on top of that. Um, yeah, can be a long three days. If you well, tie boys tonight, yeah, I reckon right? there is. No. Nice to sleep well tonight. As we would get that one out on the leg side there. Field comes around from mid on, keeps it to a single. We would moves to forty five. Wolmsley on seven three for eighty two. Well, you, you'd remember the days of the, the four-day grand finals when it was Saturday, Sunday, then come back the next Saturday, Sunday. That yeah, was... I played in one of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, very... They were, yeah. A they were a challenge, those yeah, games. they were. But then uh, the three-day grand final got instigated. I think it was about mid-2000s. Yeah, that sounds maybe. about right. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, overall they've... The players don't mind getting a day off work, and uh, <laughs> and but just gets it done in the one weekend. I think it takes away any sort of variables in, in how the pitch is, and you, know, you have to get the pitch up again for the next weekend and all that sort of stuff. You get to play just on the one pitch that's uh, that stays the same. It certainly seems to have worked. Um, cricket North do the same, don't they? Yep, cricket. Yeah. They've, they've, they've toyed with that going back to the four-day grand final at times. Uh, but they were, they were certainly a three day this year, although their game was over yesterday. So, congratulations to Westbury who claimed the flag there over over Launceston. And uh, yeah, it, uh, the Premier League Grand Final still ticking along there at uh, Blunston Arena. Lindsay's far 8 for 230. So, overall lead there of around 370. So, I imagine that game not far away from ending. Oh, oh, short pitch ball there by Stafford, dispatched by Winwood for six. That brings up his 50, does it in style. Lovely 50 by Alex Winwood off 86 balls, four fours and two sixes. And that was uh, that was just a rank long <laughs> off from young Riley, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, isn't bowled too many of them. No, <laughs> probably the worst ball he's bowled all game, I reckon. And uh, promptly dispatched by Winwood. Makes the score up to 89. The lead now is over 100. Oh, full of ball there from Stafford. Just pushed that through a little bit quicker. He was keen not for keen not to repeat that last delivery. That one through a bit quicker again, Stafford. That's the over ball. Just the six off it coming off the bat of Winwood, which brought up his half century. The Black Caps three for 89, lead of 106. And uh, they're slowly turning the screws on this game. Batting Winyard out of it. But uh, we've seen before. Great fight from the Tigers so far in the final series. After coming in with on the back of three losses in two day cricket, <laughs> you would you wouldn't have you wouldn't have bet someone else's money that they're going to make much of an impact in the in this in this finals. But they've uh, they bundled out minor premiers of the tribe and then have given a very good account of themselves here after being in trouble at eight for one twenty one. Warsley gets one there on the pad, just works that behind square for an easy single. Yeah, they've had a funny season, haven't they? Like they started off. Started the season off really well with the Greater Northern. Well, they, they probably benefited from they got early wins in those first couple of rounds yeah. when a lot of other games got washed out. I don't know. Alveston was fun. Took Alveston three weeks, four weeks to yeah, get on the field. On the field yeah. Whereas Winyard had already played a couple of games, so now yeah, it was a bit of a disjointed start to the season for all clubs. But uh, after that, we've, uh, I must say we've had pretty good weather and. Barely a ball's been lost in general play. 
and uh, fortunately that's gone through to the semi-finals and grand final as well where we intruded to very nice cricket conditions and uh, nothing worse than seeing games decided by rain and wet wet outfields or wet wet squares. No, it certainly looks like the uh, the wicket out there looks like a belter in the ground itself is yep. in great nick. Sandy Irrigata with Winwood back down the pitch. So Winwood's half century there, that's his uh, fourth half century of the season. Winwood goes on the sweep, doesn't beat the man there who's come across from backward square leg. So just a single there to the Alberson skipper, he moves along the 53, the score 3 for 91 after 30 overs. Apart from, apart from UCI, UCI over where old Albert Creed used to roll up plenty of flat tracks for you, for you guys over there. Was there a favourite ground you liked batting at? Oh. Was it? Um. Or well, UCI was that, the, the, the highway there at UCI was, was, <laughs> was that good. It was pretty hard, pretty hard to like anything else. I probably certainly scored most of my runs at Olsen. So, <laughs> um, oh, I love all the grounds there. Yeah, all the grounds are really good. Like, especially the ground. You know, like you got to take your hat off to the to the uh, to the grounds that have the volunteer curators. Yep. Um, yeah, so much time goes into preparing them. Interesting to see what uh, what the new um, the new win you do yeah. Uh, yeah. comes up like. Yeah, so the, the square is a. Uh, oh. Winwood goes in the attack there down to Cow Corner that's, and he'll help himself to a boundary. That's your typical lefty shot. Left hand a slog sweep there. Another four to Winwood. He's up to 57, three for 95, the Black Caps. Yeah, the square's already been laid at, um, at the footy ground there, so uh, there's a bit of time to settle, get through a footy season. Hopefully, uh, the grass holds up there and uh, they can get through the end of the footy season. There's still plenty of grass on there to start bringing up a wicket. Nice. So I think it uh, certainly helps here at Waratah when you when the general manager is a, a uh, self-confessed credit nut. Yeah, definitely. And Shane Crawford. Got the right man on board for that yeah, project. I think the Winnie Crick Club are very happy that he's, uh, he's in charge there. As we would. Swoops that one to the leg side, gets a single. But uh, the, show, the showgrounds will be missed. It was a unique venue in um, coastal cricket, especially if you had a wicket on one side of the square. There was, <laughs> yeah, was, there was a very, if there was a wicket on one side of the square, there was a very short boundary on that side. Yeah, there'd be plenty of balls go missing down that bank. Down that bank towards the, towards the English River there. And I, I imagine if you're captaining the, the opposition team there, it could be a nightmare to try and set a field. <laughs> Some bowlers who just wouldn't get a bowl <laughs> because because of their propensity, propensity to maybe drop short or just bowl a few pies. Scotty Allen one day hit uh, hit Darren Rossiter for about six sixes in an over. Oh. It was quite entertaining. I'm sure Darren took it well. <laughs> I'm sure Scotty let him know about it. Winwood goes on the drive again, beats the man there, short cover, goes out towards the boundary. I think it's Harvey chasing, uh, not Harvey, Albanini chasing after it. And they, Winwood gets three, so it's re Winwood's really got the score ticking along at the moment. Started this session on 34, no doubt, already up to 61. And Black caps three for ninety nine. Oh, Warmsley goes on the sweep now. Good strike to that man. That's uh, what would you call that fielding position? It's not really fine leg, and it's not really backward square. It's no, it's uh, sort of in between the two, really, isn't it? Is. He's about thirty metres in, twenty metres in from the boundary. Not sure he's there for a catching opportunity or not. Top edge. I did download a. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why. <laughs> a long, 
A short long leg. <laughs> Have you also heard of that? Here we go, guys. Here's the sweep shot again from Winwood, and that man, he's, he's busy. I was going to say he's getting a fair work. Yeah. I think it's uh, Chettle. He's uh, getting a fair few deliveries. As Sandy Here we go, is straying on the leg stump at the moment. Winwood gets another single. He's up to 62. What three for 101? Oh, that's down leg side again. Warms gets that one fine. He might have come off the thigh pad though. So says umpire Scott Pierce. He would have woke up a bit grumpy today, I reckon. Oh, I imagine so. After uh, Freo's defeat last he's night. He's turned into a Freo supporter with his uh, son Alex, captain in the club. But uh, yeah, Freo, a rough start to the season. Under the new uh, stewardship of A. Pierce at the helm, so no, I'm sure the big fellow will turn him <laughs> he'll around. He'll sort him out. He'll sort him out. Now, it was a handy cricketer in his junior days. A. Pierce obviously had a nice bit of height about him. But, uh, just to try, just to try to remember, bowled he bowl a bit. Yeah, he's probably class himself as a batting all rounder. Yeah, um, yeah bowled, bowled some pretty handy mediums uh, with his height. Uh, and yeah, pretty solid with the stick as well. Used to go to the golf course too, I think. Yes, yeah. Well, uh, he will say he will tells his story that he was a uh, an Australian champion. <laughs> yeah. And technically, he's correct uh, in some sort of uh, high school golf tournament. Yeah. So he does. Uh, he does not sure of the standard of the rest of the field. <laughs> Let's talk about that a bit. But he can whack the ball. I've played a few rounds with him. Continues here. We need to let that go outside of stuff. So, a shout out to the big Moose if he's uh, watching. Shoot us a message, mate. If any dirt on A. Leary, <laughs> we have to accept it. Half appeal there from Stafford, but uh, not even close to being the old boy. So, you just feel we wouldn't want to just taking the air out of the Tigers, just taking the roar out of them. Oh, she's played up actually there from Winwood, but uh, Sandy Girigoda there. Short cover. It was well short of him. Oh, full toss. Winwood comes down the way, gets a single. Oh, oh direct hit! Jeez. Not out at all. Well, Winwood was just a little bit uh, slow off the mark there when he decided to run. And I think he thought he was going to make it home quite easy, but the direct hit kept the winged players interested. But don't quite Mark Smith said, no, we would just got home. That did, that's tight. That I, was tight. Uh, I'd like to see a slow mo replay of that. Hang on, let's have a look at so we can a replay here. That bat looked. I don't know if that bat was quite grounded. Ooh, oh, yeah, I think he, no, he, it was just a bit casual though, wasn't it? He, he wasn't putting the big ones in with you there. No. Very hard to give out, I think, run outs, especially direct hits. So, over bowl there from Stafford, just the one off, 33 in the books. Olsen three for 104, lead 121. So, a shout out to uh, the Simon Davis Shield boys watching the live stream today. <laughs> I did put a call out on the group chat there. Yes, did you get any... Uh, oh, lights? Jack Vanderfoon seemed keen. I haven't, <laughs> haven't yeah. seen Jack. I'm saying that. I'm not sure of Jack's cricket cricket credentials, to be honest. Apart from Simon Davis Shield. <laughs> or he makes a mess of himself. Uh, well, he's not the Lone Ranger. No. <laughs> no but another successful SDS Shield, uh, number oh. 19, I think. Yeah, successful day. Well, personally, it probably wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't that successful from a cricketing point of view, but um, yeah, no, it's a great day. Twentieth anniversary this year. Yeah, yeah, we're we're going big this year. Oh no, <laughs> because it hasn't been big enough. Joey, uh, Joey Cotton started this little betting, um, this betting syndicate, and we've had a couple of, couple of pretty handy wins. So I think the uh, the plans are to throw a few funds towards uh, yeah, really amping it up this year. Oh yeah, so 
for those who don't know what we're talking about, there's a backyard cricket tournament up here called the Simon Davis Shield. It's been going for 19 years. As, as Winwood puts it through the covers again there, he's really timed that nicely. It's heading towards the boundary. Don't think he'll quite get there. He'll just amble through for an easy two. He's up to 66. Three for 106. So it used to be held at the Cook's residence of uh, John and Carol Cook in Anna Place. Unfortunately, it had to move when John and, John and Carol decided to sell up. And uh, it's been to a couple of different venues, but now it's found a bit of a home out uh, out in the back blocks of fourth, where the music can be <laughs> music can be played as loud as anyone wants it, and not disturb any neighbours because really there isn't any. Yeah, that's the beauty of the, the venue. Um, very much uh, away from civilisation. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only problem is just trying to getting transport to and from to and from the place. Wow, well, they've. We now camp there the night, so it's, uh, it's a problem sort of, solved. It's a problem solved. As Winwood goes on the drive again, he's timed this one a little bit better. Heads towards the uh, extra cover boundary, and yeah. Damien Harvey can't stop that one. It's gone for four. Winwood up to seventy three for one three for one ten. And Olsen's starting to take control here this afternoon. So uh, yeah, instigated plenty of coastal cricket luminaries who've played in the played in the SDS Shield. Uh, Brent Monday is obviously one of the key organisers of it all. Uh, Christian Cook, who played plenty of uh, cricket at Devonport, uh, and uh, Sean Knott from Olsen's pl- played in it. Yeah, he came back this year actually. Oh, yeah, slotted in. <clears throat> and it's not just hosted coastal cricket luminaries, it's hosted a str- one Australian. The year George Bailey played was, there's a bit of wow, <laughs> wow factor that year. Yeah, I remember no, that. a lot of people talk about that. And, um, and sure not bold chin music to yeah. him with a, t- <laughs> with a taped up tennis ball. <laughs> yeah, no, that, was a, that was a good year. Aaron McCall, another regular. Yeah, China comes home mm-hmm. quite often now. Okay, comes home from Perth. They, they come from all parts of the country to participate. They sure do. Which uh, probably just shows the popularity of it. So, Winwood doesn't quite time that one on the leg side. So, over by six off at three for 110, lead now 127. Thinking they might need to swing a few changes with the ball just yeah, to try and maybe try and buy a wicket. Try and make something happen. Yeah. But the problem, the problem when, when you attack as is they're a little bit threadbare, they're really. With Adam Daniel not bowling at the moment because of a shoulder injury, they're just they're probably a bowler short in the attack. Love to see the big G roll the arm over. <laughs> yes, he hasn't he hasn't rolled the arm over for a while. The big G, <laughs> uh, the biceps, the size of a biceps is just too big to bowl these days. All right, Quest, questions come in on the Simon Davis group chat. <laughs> From Clay Griffiths, has anyone done the Simon Davis Shield Cricket Northwest double flag? Simon Davis in, the, in, the, in the one year, I'm oh, in the one year. In the, well, in the one year. Wow. Well, you you would you've obviously done the double. Um, I, not, I, not in the one year. Not in the one year. No, I've only won uh, one Simon Davis flag. Someone like Barrett might be a chance, or, or Boozer maybe. Uh, Barrett, but yeah, Brent Mullen is another Simon Davis regular. Is a very fine was a very fine Cricket Northwest player. Wolf that comes forward there to Stafford. Uh, Barra has probably had a little bit of premiership success at Burnie and may have, may have snared the double. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. That's a good question, Clay. Good to see you watching, though, Clay, as well. You just finished a gym session or something, Clay? No doubt. Pumped out about 200 burpees. <laughs> Yeah. One, of the, one of the fitter units in coastal sport, <laughs> Kay Griffith. I'm sure if Barra's done it, he'd know about it. He'd, he'd, well, tell, he'd tell us pretty quickly. That's right. I reckon he'd be right on to it. Because he has been known, Barra, to uh, make sure he's in the, in the better... T- in the best team in Simon Davis Shield, yeah. there has been has been allegations of of team stacking yeah. at times. No, I've got no doubt a bit of that's been going on for years. <laughs> Some dubious team draws <laughs> over the years. So over bold 
here at Latrobe, 35 in the books. Olsen 3 for 110, Winwood up to 70 not out. He's already put on uh, 36 this session. Wormsley just just uh, he doesn't have to too doesn't have to do too much at the moment. The great Josh Wormsley, he's just on nine. He's only added six to his uh, lunchtime score. A bit of discussion yeah. going on here. Uh, so just oh, we're trying to get a field right, are we? Sandy Girigoda just directing traffic out there at the moment. Looks like he uh, is coming on the bowl again. So I've said the fielder. So the guy that was uh, sort of backward square has gone just to a traditional deep mid wicket now. So this would probably fall. This will probably make Winwood and Wormsley potentially sweep a bit. Yeah, it's a strong offside field here, but uh, maybe try and get him to play across the line to one that yep. they shouldn't. What should we play there by Winwood? So we've got a short cover, a traditional cover, a cover point, mid on, mid off, and Sharman at first slip. There's we would get drives, but uh, only to sit down to uh, Valbadoni there and mid off. Yeah, just need to make some magic happen here, Winyard. Well, there's an easy single there by Winwood Short. Of a length by Sandy Garagata and on Winwood's hip, and Winwood easily clips that one for a single. Here, doing his side screen duties. Oh, short by San Diego. Dispatched by Josh Wormsley behind square for four. Fruit for the sideboard there by, for Wormsley. Half tracker down leg side, and with no one behind square there, Wormsley easily found the boundary for his first boundary of the innings. He's up to 13, three for 115. Just a very loose delivery there from San Diego. You just feel this game just starting to get away here from Wynyard. They've shown great fight over the first two days and uh, in the first session this morning, but uh, it's just, just showing signs of unravelling a little bit here now. As Wormsley and Wynwood take control of this innings. 3 for 115 after 36, the lead up to 132. They quickly, the lead was 84 at lunch, so they put on uh, 48 already in uh, about 40 minutes, so over a run a minute at the moment, and the, yeah, the runs are starting to pile up here, Andrew. Yeah, it's been a good patch for, for the Oli boys. Uh, batting time and, and runs. Yeah, they'd be probably hoping, they'd be thinking if they could get through the next half hour or so unscathed that they'd have, a, they'd have one hand on the trophy, you would think. Ooh, well bowled there by Stafford. A, a slight leading edge there off Winwood's back. What's the, uh, have you got a score over at oh, yeah, West Park? Yeah, I haven't had a West Park score for a while. So, in the second grade, the decider at West Park is Stafford Bowles here to Winwood and just work to the leg side. Olsen, nice little partnership going here, 2 for 91. Toby Hutton, 42 off 60. Andrew Van Tatnove, he's, he's decided to be the shoot anchor here in this innings, 18 off 96. Oh, here it comes, yeah. As one bounce over the rope, hit over the line here at Latrobe by Winwood at, uh, at long off. That's another boundary for Winwood. He's up to 75, seven fours, two sixes. He's 
taking control of his oldest innings. Staff it in again. Clip off the toes there by Winwood, but straight to mid wicket. So, yeah, Hutton, 42 off 60 with eight boundaries, and Hutton over 18 not out off 96. Two for 91 off 35 overs there. Yep. Oh, as Winwood finds the gap again between cover and extra cover. And helps himself to another two. The runs are flowing thick and fast here at Latrobe now. As Olsen bat their way to a 12th A grade premiership. So the two wicket takers for the Hurricanes in that second grade grand final. Nathan Hayes, one for 34. Lucky Roberts, one for 12. But, uh, the handy partnership of uh, 63, uh, 53 so far between Hutton and Van Tattenhove. Van Tattenhove's had a pretty good year. He has, he's, uh, yeah. He's had a taste of a bit of A grade cricket as well. And Van Tattenhove, an experienced campaigner, has played in those, started in many of those premiership teams in the sort of 10 years ago for Alveston. That could be a good chase. Yeah, it looks like it'll be a very good day of cricket there at West Park. So if you're in the area, pop down. Bowling change. Skipper's, Skipper's brought himself on, which is good. I'd like to see that. So Sandy Garrigo to spell is finished. In the uh, Premier League Grand Final down Hobart, Lindisfarne all out for 2.39. So University have just started their second innings, needing... Uh, what have we got there? 143... About 380 to win. Wow. Probably my esti quick estimation there. With an afternoon and a half to do it. So it could be an exciting run. <laughs> I think there's not going to be too much blocking there from the uni boys. <laughs> Tim Payne, obviously one of the players there for the uh, university, so he'll uh, no doubt be needed with the bat at some stage. But uh, you'd think Lindisfarne had that one under control and at uh, Blundstone Arena. Hodgetts works. Worked by Wolsey off the pads there to the left of the field there at mid wicket. Easy single to Wolsey. He's up to fifth, uh, 14, 3 for 122. Hodgetts in again. Well wide off stump left by Winwood. Superb form at the moment. It's been a fantastic year. All together goes on the attack again, goes long down the ground. And just waiting on Umpire Scott Pierce, so that's a four. Great shot there by Winwood. He's up to 81. Century in the offering here if he keeps his keeps his head. Two centuries in a, in, a, in one grand final, do you work with? Yeah. Now actually I can remember the last grand final that happened. That was uh, uh, Bernie beat Devonport and Dale Baker and Brad Arnold both made tons. Yeah, right. And both got awarded joint man of the match. D oh, right. There you go. I think Baker made about 150 odd. You'd tell me if you, if you had me number, Baker. You'd know exactly <laughs> how many damn well made. I think Brad might have made about 140 ish in a losing cause. Uh, Devonport. I think Devonport were chasing about 400. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fell about 80 or run short, maybe, something like that. As Winwood works that one easily off the pads to the left of mid-wicket, helps himself to another single. So, Holston just continuing to surge ahead here. The lead now 143. And they've really done that without too much effort. Three for 126 off 38. As we need to try and search for a wicket here in the first hour of this second session. But uh, in our centuries in grand finals, they've been pretty rare, so it's good to at least have one and then possibly two if Winwood uh, gets up gets up here. I think uh, after Braddon. Braden Dale made century. I think the next one will have been Chris Dell in the 0304 grand final, which Devonport defeated Wynyard in. And then Adrian Hall made one the next year for Wynyard in their win over Burnie, I think. 
And after that, there hasn't been one. Some, t some teams have been lucky to score 100 themselves. Yeah, it's not the bands of low scores. What's, the, what's, the, what's your theory on that? Is it just, just a nerves thing? Just a... Oh, yeah, like it's just, yeah, it's just finals. It's uh, just a different, different game, extra pressure. Um, I can't recall, can't recall many, like batting on many bad wickets. No. Um, yeah. Off the pads there by Winwood, another single. He moves along to 83, three for 128. And uh, a couple of well, a couple of retirements that we know of in coastal cricket at the end of the season. So Gary Miles has finished up, at least in first grade for Sheffield, and James Westcombe's hung up the hung up the pads for uh, La Trobe. He would have played a little bit against both of them there. Andrew Westcombe, Scum in particular, uh, if he had a Played a full cricket career. Obviously, he had a bit of time off there with um, with football and that. But he's uh, he's one of, one of the more talented all rounders we've had on the northwest coast. Yeah, no, he's a pretty handy player. Um, scum. I'm sure, why well, they call him Scum? It's a, it's a top. It's he's also, to he's also well, it's very to do with his surname. <laughs> but then he's also called Primo. Yeah. And everyone thought that was because he was a premium player but, <laughs> but apparently from what I saw on social media during the week it's not why he was called Primo it's just named Primo after some guy in Melbourne called Primo yeah right. but, uh, I yeah. should give uh, Gary Miles a shout out actually he's down at um, down at uh, Hobart watching uh, watching one of our horses run around this afternoon right. so uh, yeah but, uh, uh, he did he did offer his apology he was keen to come to the commentary box this weekend but he's uh he said he was going to be away, so shout out to Gazan. Fantastic uh, first grade career start at Devonport, then up to Sheffield as Winwood goes on the drive, but well fielded by the man in close there. If anyone out there wants a bit of a nibble on something, have a look at Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor? Rowan Hamer trained, I'm assuming? Yep. Yep. But, uh, Make no apologies though, if it loses. <laughs> <laughs> Gamble responsibly, Pete. <laughs> Uh, what's, the, what's the form on the Ring of Honor? Can we back with any confidence, or is it uh, Maiden, or what are we looking at? Oh, no, it's already... It's uh, had a couple of wins in Tassie already. So, the shot there from Winwood played with force, and I think it was Damien Harvey there. He can only just parry it to his left. Winwood will pick up two. He moves along to 85 now. Three for 130. Lead 147. Goes on the attack again, Winwood gets it through the fielder there at uh, short oh, cover. Ended up over there. Oh, <laughs> well, the fielder, the fielder there at short cover actually did get a hand on it and it just sort of carried to uh, mid off. We we're all looking to the deep cover boundary for a, ba for a boundary, but uh, it went the other way. Hodgetts again. Worked that one to the fielder at mid wicket. Short. Winwood lays it to the onside it's for a six. Up on the bike track. There's a short ball there from Hodgins. He's up to 93 now, Winwood. He's rattling towards his century. Didn't, didn't stay along with the Devils. No, no, no he got off that pretty off that quick. pretty quickly. He's up to 93. The score, 3 for 138 after 40 overs. And it's just starting to uh, all get a bit hard for Winyard now. They really don't look like getting a wicket. And Wormsley and Winwood in particular have feasted on some loose deliveries. So they started the session 3 for 67. So I've already put on uh, 71, and we're not even up to the drink spray in this session. Uh, Stafford in again, Wormsley off the back foot. Can't wait to see the gear go to there, a short cover.
Woolsey comes, takes a step down the wicket, works it to the leg side. Fielder from uh, deep mid wicket comes around. Can't prevent two there to Wormsley. He moves on to 16. Three for 140. Any answers? Any answers on the Davis first grade double? Wormsley across the work on the leg side, but can't beat Harvey at mid wicket. Did uh, Barra venture up in there at any stage? No, I haven't seen Barra this 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 weekend. Yeah, some sort of bad 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 definitely bad in tournament. Very open stance at the moment. Gets him behind that one from Stafford, pats it back down the pitch. Also ties that one to the off. Oh, <laughs> come off Sandy Girigo's boot, flipped up onto his floppy hat and just knocked it off his head slightly. End of the over, two off. 41 in the books, 3 for 1, 40, believe, 157. We, uh, I mentioned before, Wormsley's over 10,000 A grade runs at Alston, Andrew. It's a, it's, you, you shake your head, you, you, you would have played with him when he first came onto the scene <coughs> as a young kid. He's, uh, it's just been, it's been a giant career already and one that's still got a few years left in it. Yeah, that's yeah, phenomenal numbers. Um, but, you know, at the age of 15, he was scoring runs. Um, looked very comfortable. But, uh, yeah, he could quite easily keep playing. I'm not sure whether he will or not, but... Um, yeah, he's, he's, pretty, like, he's pretty quietly spoken. He doesn't give away too much in terms of his career, but I suppose as long as he still enjoys it... Yeah, I was talking to him there before. Before, and... Uh, Quizzed him a little bit on what on whether it might be his last game or not, and he yeah. certainly didn't he didn't give anything away. Um, yeah, so I kind of got the impression he's he's going to keep going. Yeah, right, yeah. So Dale Baker is obviously the leading run scorer in uh, Cricket North West history with uh, I'm going to write down there thirteen thousand and eighty five runs. Wow. <laughs> so Wolsey probably have to play. At least another five seasons to yeah. have it and, and get 500 runs a year to catch him. Yeah. Um, so he can definitely he can definitely it, do, do it, Josh. He's still because he's still he's what early to mid 30s. Yeah, I think he'd be around that mid 30 mark. So yeah. Dale obviously played well into his 40s. This call comes down to whether he's got the fire yep. in the belly. Oh, so Adam Daniel is into the attack. So we didn't think. He's been bowled for a while, Adam, due to a shoulder injury, but uh, willing to roll the dice here in the last game of the season, we knew, in search of a wicket. I think you've just got to do it. You've just got to keep rolling yep. it. <coughs> hopefully jag one and and then uh, hopefully follow with another two or three quick ones. So Daniel's the younger brother of, uh, of Andrew Davidson. Uh, but short down leg side, Wingwood just helps himself down to uh, fine leg for a boundary. Poor delivery there from Daniel. Winwood up to 97. And the score, 3 for 144. So, a century firmly in the sights now of Winwood. And given the season he's had for the Black Caps, it would be thoroughly deserved. Outstanding with the bat and ball. Along with captaincy duties as well, and a century in a winning grand final team would be the icing on the cake. Had a book delivery there from Daniel. You'd be hoping for a nice, nice uh, half tracker here, and, yeah. and uh, just rock back and put him away somewhere. That Pick up the hundred, but not making work hard for it. There it is. Oh, there it goes. Oh, oh he's missed it. 
missed. It was a, pretty much a carbon copy of the delivery a couple of balls ago that got him an easy boundary down to five leg. That one, he just got through it a bit quicker and maybe oh, he didn't, go, didn't get much bat on it at all. And, uh, and uh, the keeper, Johnny Blake, was able to tidy up behind the stumps. But, uh, just missed out there, Winwood. So does he get another opportunity? Daniel around the wicket. Oh, there it is there. Clipped off the hip, down the fine leg. Not going to quite get to the boundary. He might have to run him. So pulls up about a metre short. Here he comes, back for the third. And that's a magnificent ton by Alex Winwood. Raises the bat and his arm as well. Great applause from the Obviously oh, boys in the stand, standing ovation. That's a magnificent hundred of 142 deliveries, nine fours and three sixes. And that has gone a long way to securing Olves in this premiership. Yeah, good knock. He makes it look pretty easy, doesn't he? Yeah, he hasn't. Yeah, some, of his, some of his cover drives early on were beautiful to watch. And then he started, after he got his 50, he really started opening up and then uh, took the spinners down the ground and has feasted on any loose bowling. Warms in our faces, Daniel. Go around there as it goes out towards cover. So it's the over bowled there from Adam Daniel. Seven off it. Three for 147, the Black Caps. Lead 164. And it might be coming to the stage where the end is near. Damien Harvey on the bowl for the Tigers. Damien did tell me yesterday, I did mention for him that he does have a bowling average of zero. One, week, <laughs> one wicket for no run this year, the great boomer. Yeah. But the form of Winwood's in at the moment, that average, <laughs> that average could blow out here a little bit if he's not careful. What have we got? A bit of spin, have we? Uh, I can't tell you what. Damien bowls. Can't say I've seen him bowl before. So usually, usually when this... When the part timers, the decidedly <laughs> part timers come on, the end is near. <laughs> they put up a brave fight, win you, but ultimately the class of Olsen's told here in this second innings as the win you charge has, has wilted. This could end up in the school. So here we go, Harvey in the bowl. Drops it on a good length to start with. Watch. Watchfully played there by Winwood. Goes in and attacked. Oh, just short of Sandy Gary I think it was a bump ball anyway. I'm sure he gets a bit of red ink here. This will help the end of season batting average. It'll come, come the annual dinner and the trophy presentation. Don't want to do anything silly here and give, give it away. Yeah, well, I have assume he's probably got a mortgage on the batting trophy without seeing the average. Well, average, well uh, Snary, Snary, uh, Snary had the slightly better average. Oh, did he come here? Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh, oh, it's gone through the field there. David Harvey can't believe it. His bowling average is blown out now. <laughs> and Winwood will help himself to an easy two. Quick outside off stump. No shot offered by Winwood. Drinks. Three for 149. As drinks come onto the field, quite possibly the last drinks break in this grand final, you would think. Just looking around the Winyard team now, just seeing if there's any suggestion that may, might be all over. No, not as yet. Drinks. Listen. A lot of milling around there at the moment. It, it, it does have the feeling that it might be all over. Yeah. And it looks like it's all over. There's the handshakes. There you go. And that's the Premiership 
to the Olsen Cricket Club, their 12th first grade premiership, claiming magnificent style here at the Latrobe Recreation Ground, with a dominant batting display in the second innings. Three for 149. Alex Winwood finishes the game on 102 not out. Josh Wormsley, 16 not out. It's been a brave fight from the Tigers, but ultimately the class of Olsen has prevailed. And uh, when you've certainly lost no admirers in this game, it's been a brave effort. They nearly got there on first innings, thanks to a century from Greg Sharman and resistance from Riley Stafford, the number 11. But ultimately they fell 17 runs short. And uh, after an opening salvo where Valbanani got three winged wickets, uh, Winwood and Wormsley have combined for a partnership of uh, 89 and steered the Black Caps to safety and ultimately the victory here at Latrobe Recreation Ground. It's been a fantastic grand final. The first innings battle was tense all the way, but uh, Olsen have emerged victorious, claimed back to back flags after their win last year against Burnie. And uh, they'll celebrate well at UCI Oval tonight. Andrew, uh, uh, just a, the class probably prevailed in the end there, didn't it? It did in the end, but yeah, geez, what a game of cricket. I mean, it, you still thought this morning that when you were a good chance to win, but uh, yeah, that's cricket. And uh, I'm sure uh, the boys will celebrate pretty hard over the next few days. So that wraps things up here from the Latrobe Recreation Ground. It's been a pleasure bringing you all the action from this Cricket Northwest Bendigo Bank first grade men's grand final. The uh, second grade grand final still in still in progress at West Park. Olveston two for ninety one, chasing uh, Bernie's two hundred thirty. So if uh, the Black Caps there can get the double first and second grade, it will certainly be a big night at uh, River Park tonight. But from this game here at Latrobe. The Trobe win on first, uh, sorry, Olsen win on first innings by 17 runs. Finished the game at 3 for 149. Alex Winwood unbeaten on 102. From the Trobe Recreation Ground, good afternoon. Good job, mate. if this will zoom in to the... There's the voice box. Yeah, she was a bit scratchy, yes, last night. No, he's done a great job. Thanks, mate. <coughs> so we'll just we'll just see if we can zoom in to the uh, presentations here on the ground. As the two teams shake hands. Leave hugs there from the Olveston players. James Smith, a very relieved coach. I know uh, in his stint in commentary yesterday, certainly uh, was decidedly on edge as Wynyard tried their best to uh, overhaul their tail of 249. So looks like we've got uh, David Hudson and Gary Collins from cricket on the, from the Cricket Northwest board here to. Present with the trophies and the medals. Obviously, a bit hard for Cricket Northwest president to do it because he's uh, his name is Scott Pearce and he's also one of the umpires. So, but the two teams line up there on the grandstand side of the ground. There's uh, David Hudson, long-time Cricket Northwest board member and umpire, begins proceedings. So we'll try and. Work out from here who the man of the match will be. I imagine Greg Sharman's innings will certainly be in consideration at Alex Winwood's century there in the second innings to take the game away from Winyard and deliver Olsen their 12th first grade premiership will certainly put him in contention as well. So, just as the, the presentation is going on here, a throng of Olveson supporters make their way across the ground from the from the eastern side of the ground. So, 
David Hudson just thanking well, the Tribe Cricket Club for hosting the grand final again. They've done a magnificent job and certainly applause to the uh, Kim Bennett, the president here at the Tribe and, and his team for, for all the work they've done off the field and also to Jason Sims, the curator here at the Trobe Recreation Ground and the Trobe Council for their superb presentation of this ground. Another another fantastic effort, but a great pitch, great uh, great outfield and uh, I think uh, it's brought about some very good cricket and one of the be best grand finals we've seen for a number of years. Two umpires, Scott Pearce and Mark Smith receiving their medallions. Good job by both umpires. I don't think there was too many controversies. There was a, maybe a little, a few, few heated words there between Matthew Varner and, and uh, the winged batsman late yesterday, but uh, that was quickly diffused. So, Gary Collins now from the Cricket Northwest board. Making his presentations. And the Dale Baker medalist for Man of the Match, Dale, one of the great grand final performers, the all time leading run scorer in Cricket Northwest history. Scored big in a lot of grand finals for Bernie and Bernie Omen. The man of the match award goes to Alex Winwood for his second inning century, which took the game away from Wynyard and ultimately delivered Olveston their premiership. So Greg Sharman can consider himself a little bit unlucky. Century in a great century in a losing cause. Uh, young Wynyard captain Mason Hodges now steps up to say a few words. It's been a great season by Mason to lead this team into a grand final. When, uh, to be fair to say, at the end of the roster season after they lost three two days in a row, many felt they were probably just making up the numbers in the semi-finals. But they, they turned in arguably their best performance of the season to defeat minor premiers Latrobe in the semi-final out here and then gave it an almighty shake in the grand final to nearly dethrone Olveston and take out their first flag since 2004-2005. But uh, Mason, he seemed to be very proud of their efforts. I look to uh, hopefully retain a lot of this playing group for next season and uh, hopefully and maybe add a, add a recruit or two. They probably still need another thing. Find another top order batsman and a, and a, uh, another uh, front line bowler. Certainly go a long way to win you becoming a, a power again in coastal cricket like they were around 15 years ago. So I'll some coach James Smith now saying a few words. As I mentioned before, he was, he, looked, he was reasonably confident at lunchtime yesterday that uh, this game was going to be over early, but uh, as the afternoon wore on and Wynyard slowly crept towards their total of 249, James's uh, demeanour quickly, uh, quickly turned, but uh, he'd be a very relieved man tonight. Ben Bott getting the job done this morning in the second over of the day, dismissing Riley Stafford and ending the Wynyard inning 17 runs short and then uh, watching his two class batsmen Alex Winwood and Josh Wormsley take the game away from the Tigers and result in the game ending at the drinks break here in this second session as uh, James hands out the Premiership medals to his team Alex Winwood first up, great season Ben Bott, the key wicket this morning of Riley Stafford. Josh Wormsley, star, star batsman. Interesting comments there from Andrew Leary about how long Josh may have in the game. Let's hope Josh continues on. He's uh, too good a player. Still got plenty of runs left in him. Braden DeVries, one to watch for the future. 
Matt Varner, the import quick, battled through a hamstring injury, but uh, certainly wasn't at full pace this game, but uh, bowled well enough. Ben May, the other opening bowler, he, battled, he was battling injury as well, a bit of a rib injury. Connor Chusen, the lower order batsman, made a handy uh, 20 odd in the first innings. Jack Pearce, the opener. He'll be looking for a big year next year, Jack. Found his way into his first grade team. He wanted to consolidate that position. Jacob Snare, talented all rounder. Another good game from Jacob. Jordan Kelly, the wicket keeper, solid behind the stumps. Really good catch this morning to get rid of Stafford down low. Reese French, he's a, a great first full season with the Black Caps. Helped uh, get him over the line in the semi final. Alex Winwood now, the Olsen captain speaking. So, Alex Winwood about to receive the Premiership Cup from Cricket North West, Gary Collins. Their 12th time of lifting the trophy. There's a well-deserved win here for the Black Caps at Latrobe Recreation Ground this afternoon. Very low-key celebrations at the moment. It's always a little bit uh, pretty low-key when the game sort of is called off midway through the day. But I'm sure the Black Caps will be celebrating hard tonight at River Road. And it's a feeling they've, uh, they've been getting used to over the last 20 or so years. There's uh, a lot of premierships. They've been a dominant force in coastal cricket. And uh, the juggernaut shows no sign of, no sign of slowing down just yet. I would have thought. So everyone's just getting organised here for the obligatory premiership pick with the with the flag and the cup. All the uh, the players, children are starting to get into the photo as well. And so everyone gets lined up. Caps off, sunglasses off. Look good for the back page pick in the advocate tomorrow. <laughs> so quite low key celebrations for the black caps at the moment. It's a uh, so that's a feeling a lot of them have experienced over the past. It's premiership success is no, no stranger to this club. They are a powerhouse of coastal cricket. So a few more photos being taken. So that's why we'll leave the coverage here at Latrobe Recreation Ground. Well, the Alves and Black Caps have taken out the Bendigo Bank Cricket Northwest first grade grand final. Defeating Wynyard in a, one of the great grand finals, led by 17 runs on first innings, then finished the day at 3 for 149. Alex Winwood 102 not out, which gained him the Dale Baker medal for man of the match. From the Trove Recreation Ground, my name's been Brad Cole. It's been a pleasure having your company over the last three days. We look forward to doing it all again next season. Good afternoon.